Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Xiao Fei Wang from Tianjin University, China. Um, on behalf of the 6GN Conference Committee, I am hereby announcing that the third EII International Conference on Beyond 5G and 6G for future wireless networks, um, which is 6GN, now begins. Uh, due to the safety concerns and travel restrictions caused by COVID-19, uh, EAI 6GN uh, 2020 will take place online in a live stream. Yes, truly it is a pity that we cannot gather and we cannot celebrate together, but luckily we have the online conference space after, offered by EAI so that we can still share our keynotes and paper talks. For 6GN this time, uh, it is our greatest honor to have more than uh, 100 submissions in total and we finally accept about 50 high quality papers. During the following two days, you can feel free to check the talks through the website, listen to the talks, and feel free to uh, discuss with the authors. Uh, please let us know anytime about your comments, your suggestions, and I sincerely wish you all a good time. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to the EAI 6 gn 2020, the third EAI International Conference on 6G for Future Wireless Networks. I'm Angelika Klobusicka, the Conference Manager of 6 gn 2020. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 emergency, I am not able to meet all of you in person. Therefore, I am using this opportunity to address the organizing committee, the keynote speakers, the authors and the participants on behalf of the European Alliance for Innovation. Thank you for being a part of this conference. In particular, I would like to thank the general chairs and the program chairs together with the whole organizing committee for their hard and excellent work throughout the whole process of conference preparation. I would also like to express our gratitude to Tianjin University for their support. During today's event, there are truly many ways how you can actively participate and enjoy online interaction. During the streaming, there is a Slack platform available for all the participants where you can discuss the presentations and participate in Q&A sessions. Upon accessing the link below for 6GM2020 workspace, you can enter all channels which are divided into sessions. Moreover, you can vote on individual presentations and leave your fellow presenters feedback via EAI Compass. In a moment, we will show you how you can access these platforms and make the most of this unique online experience. I would also like to use this opportunity to invite you to join us for the next edition of 6GN in 2021. We will keep you updated and the news about this event will be available on the conference website. Should you be interested in becoming part of the next year's edition organizing committee or the technical program committee, please do not hesitate to contact me at my email address available below. In addition, if you are interested in organizing an event with EAI, such as a conference, a workshop or a seminar, please do not hesitate to contact me at my email address as well. I will be happy to provide you with more information. Now, our community manager Michal will talk more about what EAI does, who we are and how you can get involved in our various activities. I hope you will enjoy the conference. Thank you for your attention. Hi everyone, my name is Michal Dudic. I'm the community manager at EAI, European Alliance for Innovation. It's my pleasure to welcome you at this conference uh, and say a few words about who we are and what we can do for you and your research career. In short, EAI is a global community for a greener, healthier and smarter world. As of today, we are home to more than 60,000 members from 167 countries and we reach out to tens of thousands of subscribers. As an organization, we are non-profit from day one, and what is most important to us is that we remain open to all researchers from all around the world thanks to membership that is completely free. 
We organize more than 100 events annually, such as this conference, and we do so in publishing partnership with Springer. I said in the beginning that EAI is a community, so let's talk about what that means and what it means for you. To put it briefly, we give our members a platform that builds their research. We do it with three main online community services where members come together to help each other write a better paper, get an objective review, and get recognized fairly. The three services in question are EAI Compass, Community Review, and EAI Index. Firstly, EAI Compass is an online app where you can meet and connect with new colleagues and get feedback on your paper as well as your presentation. In addition to that, it lets you download all full papers that will be presented at this conference and you can vote on your favorite presentations as well as see everyone who is here and connect with them. You can do this right now if you go to EAI Compass website, compass.eai.eu. Next, we are improving the classic conference review process with community review. It has already been in use at all our events since 2019, and we were very excited to hear a lot of positive feedback from program committee members regarding the reliability and the speed of the community review. Let's talk briefly about what community review does. Essentially, it is a website that shows abstracts of papers that are right in the middle of the review process, as long as the authors allow it, of course, and all EAI members may then bid to review specific papers. When they submit their bid, they put in their bio and their qualifications, which are sent to the program committee, who can then decide whether or not this bidder is qualified to review the paper they bid on. This relatively easy access to review opportunities means that bidders really need to put their best foot forward if they wish to be selected, which improves the quality of the entire review process. At the end of the day, this benefits you, the author. And last but not least, let me tell you a thing or two about EAI Index. EAI Index is our credit-based evaluation system that we rolled out this year to all of our conferences and journals that allow you to climb the global ranks of EAI community and get recognized for your work. It calculates a number of value for most actions you make, such as getting your paper accepted or submitting a review, and these numbers accumulate for 12 months. At the end of this 12-month period, we put together a ladder of all EAI members, and the ones at the top receive a nomination to one of the membership ranks – senior member, distinguished member, or fellow. For each action that is eligible for EEI index credits, we'll look at the quality of your action as it was evaluated by another member of the community, such as, for example, the review score of your submission. To make sure that the system is fair to newcomers, every 12 months the credit count gets erased, the ones at the top receive their nominations, and every member starts at zero for the following 12 months. And finally, Smart Submit is a collaboration feature that is coming later this year. It will allow you to submit your research ideas and your work-in-progress abstracts to get the kind of help and feedback you're looking for. Maybe you are looking for co-authors, maybe you would like to find a mentor or a mentee, or maybe you want to find out how the community feels about your idea. This is what Smart Submit is designed for. Ultimately, it's about helping you write a better paper and increasing your chances of getting accepted. Again, we will be launching this feature later this year, so stay tuned. And so I'm going to leave you with many different ways to get engaged at different levels. There are lots of opportunities in many of our events and publications, which means many ways to connect with people and collaborate. You may learn more about everything I just talked about at our website, eai.eu. These services exist to help you and to make your lives easier, so we encourage you to send us your comments, ideas, and feedback to community at eai.eu. And if you're interested in volunteering and contributing, you can let us know at the same email address. Don't forget that you can use EAI Compass to vote on presentations in real time to determine which ones are the best, as well as to download all full papers that will be presented today. Just make sure that you log in using the same email address as the one you used to register to this conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please enjoy the conference and I hope we will see everyone online soon.
Hello everyone, my name is Dusit Nieto. I am a professor at the School of Computer Science and Engineering, Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. And this is the topic, the title of my talk today, Reliable Federated Learning for Mobile Networks. This is the outline of my presentation. So we are going to make a uh, introduction uh, for the federated learning we highlight the security challenges for the federated learning and introduce some solution for the security challenges which is the federated learning and then we present our work related to the reputation for the reliable federated learning so we use the subjective logic model for the reputation calculation and we use the blockchain to make a recording of the reputation data in the secure and reliable way. Then some numerical results will be presented and followed by the summary of the presentation. So why we need federated learning? So there are so many applications of the machine learning in our life now. So AI-based voice input and many other services. So it's become increasing popular to utilize machine learning technology to tremendously enhance or improve the performance of the mobile application. However, traditional Machine learning requires mobile devices to directly upload user data, which could be the sensitive, private, or confidential data uh, of the user to a centralized server. So the purpose is that the server will use the data for model training to obtain the machine learning models that will be used for the application. So the challenges here is that they are, we need a large computation and storage overhead at the server and the centralized management will suffer from a single point of failure. What if the server fail while the training process is ongoing? So we need to redo the training again, for example. And also the data manipulation can happen. For example, if the attacker is able to attack to the server. So the attacker will have the access to the user private data. So this uh, caused the security and privacy leakage problem. And the centralized approach hinder the future development of the machine learning algorithm because of the User do not like their data, do not want to contribute their data because they are afraid of uh, privacy leakage. So these are the challenges of current machine learning. So we are looking at some approach. Can the data is stored and processed for the machine learning training at the edge? So the data storage and processing can be moved to the device at the edge. So the motivation are clear. We want to improve the latency. We want the training process to work offline efficiently. And also we can save the battery life because we don't need to transfer the data to the server. And the most important thing is that there will be the privacy advantages because now the mobile user do not need to transfer the data to the server, but they can do the model training, the machine learning machine, uh, model training locally by using the, the local data. There is no need to send the local data to the global server. So that's provide a privacy preservation mechanism. So how about the learnings, for example, on device analytics inference for the mobile keyboard and camera would be the application we, that uh, people use to demonstrate such a 
approach, a decentralized approach. So basically, what happened for the on-device analytic inference for the mobile keyboard is that when the user uh, write out the character on the mobile devices, so the machine learning algorithm will translate that handwritten uh, image into the character. So it is similar to the OCR software, but uh, quality of the machine learning algorithm uh, may not be 100% accurate. So the user will provide the feedback if the translation from the handwriting to the character is incorrect, so the user will make the correction. So that provide the data set for the machine learning to train and improve the machine learning model for recognizing the handwriting of the user. But the user may not want that data to be transferred to the server. For example, the user do not want the server to know what letter or messages that they wrote and the correct which correct correction that happened. So this kind of the data set can be kept at the mobile devices and used for decentralized machine learning training process that we are going to talk in the few next few So the concept of that decentralized machine learning algorithm, uh, one of them has been introduced by Google, uh, which is the federated learning. So it is the collaborative machine learning without centralized training data. So again, the data of the user will be maintained at the user device. There is no need to transfer the data to the server. And that data will be used to train the model, which could be located at a certain location. For example, it could be at the server or it could be at the edge devices. Here you may have a question, if the model is still at the server, so we still suffer from the earlier issues, right? But the one of the important challenges, which is the privacy preservation can be solved by using the federated learning because the mobile user do not need to transfer the data private data to the server at all. So uh, there is no issue for the privacy leakage. So what is the federated learning? So the federated learning is the algorithm that enable machine learning engineers and scientists to work productively with decentralized data with privacy by default. So how is work here? So we have two uh, component. The first one is cloud service provider and the mobile devices. So the cloud service provider maintain the current machine learning model parameters, while the mobile device maintain the local data. So the local data will be used to train the model at the server. So how is work? Here we may have multiple or a number of users and to have the different kind of the data. First step, uh, some device may not be active. So we are looking at certain device that active and willing or be able to participate in the model training for the cloud service. So in the first step, the server will select a sample of devices such as a worker, for example, 100 online devices. But in this figure, it's just uh, three of them. And then the server will send the device, the model, the global model parameters to the active devices. So the active device will use the local data to train the global model parameter sent by the server locally. So the data will be used for the training process here. It, the data will not be transferred outside the mobile devices of the user at all.
So after the mobile device finished the local model training, so we will obtain the local model update. And then the mobile devices will send the, the model updates back to the server. So the server will do the aggregation of the user model parameters together from the multiple user and obtain a new global model. So this is the process that require no local private data of the user to be released or to be transferred outside the mo mo mobile devices at all. So only the model parameter, which is, for example, the weight in the neural network will be sent from the mobile devices to the server only. So it is very difficult for the attacker to use that parameter to extract and understand the data that the user have. So the principle of uh, privacy principle here is that the server never persists or keeps the per device report. So this process of training will be repeated until the global model of the server converge and achieve the good performance. For example, if the machine learning algorithm is for a certain prediction, the accuracy of the prediction is high enough and converge to a certain number. So the process will stop. So, of course, under this algorithm, when we have more number of users contributing the training model updates to the server, the accuracy, the quality of the global machine learning model at the server will be better. So, this is the approach and it will be the even better if the server can personalize or customize the parameter sent or global or the model parameter that the mobile user sent back to be aggregated at the server. So there are some algorithms to do the customization and personalization that allow the parameter from the different mobile user to update the global model at the server. So the accuracy of the global machine learning model at the server will be So these are the characteristics or features of the federated learning compared with the traditional distributed learning. So the data locality and distribution aspect. So the federated learning is totally decentralized and naturally uh, there would be the partition among the different user. So one user will not know the other user in the system. And it is the way that the server can select and control the parameter update sent by the mobile user. So the data availability. So there will be the limited availability and time of the day variation for the federated learning. So if some user is not active or not available at that time, they can be uh, participating in the algorithm later. So they don't need to be all active and then contribute to the training process at the same time. So the addressability, in the federated learning, the data nodes or the worker are anonymous and interchangeable. So that means if we have two users, one user is not active, we can use the data of the other user as some replacement. So the nodes, statefulness, we, are, we do not need the node, to, we do not need to know the state of the users. So the, it is a stateless and the node may not be always available. So we don't need to be a uh, system to be so reliable because we can let the different user participate in the model training at the different time. 
and the federated learning from the wide area communication pattern. So it's more like hub and spoke topology. So that means it's more asynchronous. So that we do not need to let all the app, the, the workers or the mobile user to be active so that the system can run. So we can let them active for a certain period of time only. From the distribution scale, so we can let the more a number of mobile users, it could be hundred or thousand of mobile users, participate and contribute in the global model training at the server because of the hub and spoke topology or the asynchronous communication. But again, if there are so many users in active at the same time, the bottleneck can still happen. So only the communication will be the problem, but not the computation as in the traditional distributed learning. So now how can we use the distributed learning? So this is the example that we, uh, we introduced. So the user type and or write the character on the mobile devices. So the processing of the tech history on the device will suggest the improvement of the correction in the next iteration of the query, uh, query uh, suggestion model. So while the machine learning can benefit from this big data, which are generated and maintained by a number of users to generate state-of-the-art model. But there are still many issues, especially when we apply the machine learning algorithms to the healthcare data, because the healthcare data is very, very sensitive data. There are so many rules and regulations that the data cannot be released. So, uh, Federated learning become a promising solution for the healthcare data and machine learning algorithms. Uh, one of the example is for the medical imaging uh, computer vision that we are able to recognize some pattern in the medical imaging. So the encrypted model is sent to the individual institutions, uh, which is the data owner or the worker. So in this case, they will decrypt secure encrypt in the hardware. So the strong encryption algorithm can be used. And then the data will be used to train the model sent by the uh, encrypted uh, model from the individual institution. So only the model update will be sent back, which is based on the federated learning. And the, this approach will provide a protection for both the model and the data because the raw data never leaves the institution, which is not only adding the privacy, but also preventing large data transfer on the network. So this will be very good and very efficient for the communication because the bandwidth required will be much, small, much smaller than the traditional approach. One of the machine learning algorithm for the medical imaging is open-minded. So it's adopt the federated learning, which allow us to train AI model on the distributed database or data set that anyone else cannot directly access. So the differential privacy can be maintained or can be achieved because it allows us to make a formal mathematical guarantees around the privacy preservation so that when we're publishing our result and the encrypted 
computation will be performed here, which allow the machine learning to be done, to be trained and to be used on the data while the data remain encrypted. Although the federated learning can solve pri uh, privacy challenges for the machine learning algorithms, but still federated learning itself uh, is facing security challenges as well. And we are going to discuss some of them in the next following slides. The first and the most important security challenge for the federated learning is the poisoning attack. So the malicious participants, for example, the worker, can corrupt the global model uh, at the server. For example, the retail store can corrupt the recommender system for its own advantage. For example, they can use the wrong data to say that the sales or the number of customers at that store is higher than the others. So for the normal learning, the data set is used for by the learning algorithm to generate the machine learning model. But for the poisoning attack, when it happens, some malicious user uh, will put the uh, wrong data or put the wrong model parameter into the learning algorithms and create the machine learning model that is favorable to them. So there are different kinds of the poisoning attack. The first one is data poisoning attack. Uh, which we already mentioned. So the dirty label samples will be used by the attacker to cause the misclassification, for example, in the recommender system. So the Sibyl attack. So this will improve the data poisoning effectiveness by the attacker. So the data poisoning effectiveness is improved by creating multiple malicious participants or workers. So in this case, in the federated learning environment, one worker may create fake workers, and those workers manipulate or send the wrong training model parameters or model update back to the server. So in this way, when there are so many fake malicious workers in the federated learning algorithms. So the attacker will be able to control and manipulate the COBOL model completely. So the solution is in the typical setting, which is uh, a non-IID, uh, the Sibyl participant of workers will contribute the gradient that are more similar to each other. So this is the observation. That means the honest participant model updates will be different from the uh, model updates from the fake users. So by using some kind of the classification or uh, detection, Anomaly detection, we are able to uh, differentiate between the model updates from the attacker and from the honest participant. So the second type of the model uh, poisoning attack is the model poisoning attack. So this is directly poison the global model by the malicious local model updates rather than manipulating the data. So instead of using the wrong data to build the wrong model parameters update, so in this model poisoning attack, the attacker generate the parameter that is 
manipulated and send that manipulated version of the model updates to the server. So it is more effective than the data poisoning attack because the attacker can direct or manipulate the global model in such a way that they specifically want it to be. So there are a few solutions, for example, the server can check if the model update from the worker or participant can improve the global model performance or, for example, the prediction accuracy or the classification accuracy or not. So if uh, the update doesn't improve the performance, so the server can mark that participant or the worker to be a potential attacker. Or alternatively, the server can check if the model update vary or so much different from the model updates provided by the other participant or workers. But again, if the cyber attack happen and there are too many fake workers or participants, so this approach may not work. And overall, these existing solutions are relatively ineffective and intractable due to the large cost and overhead happening in the system. So the general solution and perhaps more effective solution for the poisoning attack can be in the following. So for the poisoning attack, if a malicious, we can observe that if a malicious data owner or worker is selected to be the workers, the malicious worker may intentionally launch or collude with other workers to perform the attack. Therefore, it is vitally important to select the worker properly and we need to design a reliable worker selection scheme for the model training in the federated learning environment. However, in federated learning, the following challenges for the worker selection need to be addressed. So the idea is that there is no reliable and fair matrices to evaluate the workers. Uh, by the global model owner or the server. So majority of the federated sys learning system just randomly select the mobile devices which are active to be the worker through some verifiable random function or resource condition. But there is nothing to indicate the reliability or the uh, trustfulness of the worker in the system. So the existing scheme that rely only on the random function or resource condition cannot prevent effectively poisoning attack by removing an unreliable or untrustable worker. So in the literature, there is no efficient and effective universal worker selection scheme. The reason is it is difficult to design such a scheme to identify the high quality data contributor or the worker and be able to differentiate the malicious worker candidate. And there is no timely monitoring method for the workers. For example, the worker can be honest at the beginning but later they can change the behavior to be malicious so it is hard for the server to monitor and maintain the information for the large scale worker behavior in real time as a result malicious or unreliable worker may be selected to be the worker again and again in the future when we have to perform a new federated learning tasks. The reason is because we lack of the historical data storage system and processing system 
that maintain the quality of the worker over the time. So that kind of the historical performance will be useful and need to be maintained and used effectively for the worker selection scheme. So to address such a challenges, we introduce a reliable matrix and design a reliable worker selection scheme for federated learning. So for our work, the motivation is clear that we would like to defend against poisoning attack. And it is very important to design such a scheme for model training. So in order to do that, we apply the reputation matrix that provide a fair measurement or quantification for the time accumulated uh, performance. So this kind of the quantification will be used to indicate and provide the rating of the worker, whether it is highly reliable and trustable or not. So the entity in the certain activity, which is the worker in federated learning in this case, so we can do that by keep track of the behavior and use that uh, information, historical information to estimate reputation, which can be used in the future for selecting workers to train the global model in the federated learning system. So the idea to fight against the unreliable model update is we use reputation, which is one of the metrics, uh, to evaluate uh, the trustfulness and the reliability of the worker. So in order to do that in practice, we apply multi-weight subjective logic model, which is able to design uh, efficient reputation calculation method according to the task publisher interaction history and the recommended reputation opinion. In other words, the multi-weight subjective logic model is able to combine multiple performance measures into a single reputation matrix that is used for evaluating the reliability and trustfulness of the worker. So to achieve secure reputation management, the reputation matrix is managed in decentralized manner by employing the consortium blockchain that we develop and deploy at the edge node. Now we would like to present our study for the reputation-based worker selection scheme with consortium blockchain for federated learning. So this is the architecture of the proposed framework. So if you are interested in the detail of the framework, you can refer to our paper which the reference will be given later. So there are three major components here. The first one is the federated learning training process. The second one is the reputation blockchain system or platform. And the third one is the subjective logic model for the reputation calculation. So they are interacting in the following way. So the federated learning training will perform the training process and the parameter or the measurement that obtained from the training process. For example, how much one worker improve the quality of the global model at the server will be used by the reputation blockchain by uh, restoring that information into the blockchain. So the information will be used to calculate the reputation based on the subjective logic model. And then 
This part will provide the worker selection decision for the federated learning uh, training process, which is run at the server. So this is iterative and repeated process. In this way, we can see that the system for the federated learning can be gradually and uh, iteratively improved based on the reputation information that we obtain from the historical data. So the reputation is defined as the rating of entity trustworthiness by other base, by others based on the past behavior. So we can use the reputation to be a matrix for select worker in the federated learning. So the reputation values will be distributed different and changing over time because of the iterative update algorithms. So it is necessary to quantify the minor candidate's reputation based on the interaction and past behavior of the worker. So the worker that could be the candidate for the federated learning training process will be selected based on the high reputation metrics. So in this way, way we can ensure that even though we cannot guarantee 100% to prevent the attacker to be selected to be the worker, but when the time pass, we should have the system that converge to the point where we are able to prevent majority of the attacker or even completely prevent the, any attacker to be selected to be the worker of the federated learning environment. So the calculation of the reputation is based on the subjective logic, which is used to formulate the individual evaluation of the reputation. So this subjective logic work based on the past interaction, past behavior, and also the recommended opinions from the other system components or even from the uh, worker themselves. So one worker may be able to recommend the reliability metrics of the other workers. So uh, the subjective logic utilizes the term opinion to denote the representation of the subjective belief, which is some kind of the raw matrix. And also the model positive negative statement under uncertainty of the parameters and system on operation. So in this figure, we can see that the based on the trust, transitive trust principle, the reputation can be transferred. For example, a list can refer the trust to Bob. So Bob can at least show that she is trustable to Bob. Bob can make a recommendation to, to a list and this is a way that we are able to calculate indirectly the function of trust and make a recommendation for the trust value to Eric. And this is the entire process of the reputation calculation in our work. So it is working based on the multi-way subjective logic model which is some extension of the subjective logic. So the extension here take the different attributes of the interaction event into consideration that potentially provide more accurate and reliable reputation calculation. In the first step, we calculate the local reputation opinion by the worker, by each of the worker. The information will be transferred to the reputation calculation for the worker selection. So the worker selection scheme aggregates the data from multiple workers and the different interaction behavior 
opinion or recommendation will be combined with on the predefined weight of the reputation calculation. So the some of the parameter that we use to calculate the uh, reputation include the interaction frequency, whether the worker interact with the global model owner or the server or not. So the interaction timeliness, if the server asks a certain worker to respond, how fast the worker responds to the request, and the interaction effective. So this will indicate the quality of the interaction. For example, if the model updates provided by the worker degrade the performance of the global machine learning model at the server, so the reputation of that worker will be reduced. Now it's come to the question that how can we maintain the reputation information of the user in a reliable and trustable way. So in order to do that, we adopt the concept of the blockchain for the reputation management. So the blockchain here provides a perfect way for distributed system to record data. For example, the reputation record that is designed to be transparent permanent and auditable. So the blockchain has been applied to so many applications. For example, the tri by Lind has created the Byte, a reputation system powered by the blockchain technology. So this blockchain platform is aiming at generating the reputation for software developer based on the quality of the written code. Also, the Airbnb founder envisioned that the reputation blockchain will empowering the share economy. So the firms can begin to rate the people in the share blockchain in order to decide whether the services to provide is having a good quality or not. So the concept of the blockchain is that it is a distributed database that maintains continuously growing list of the order record. So the records are collected and put it into a block. Anyone can create and complete the smart contract by doing the mining and proof of work to store the data into the public ledger permanently. So in this way, we want to ensure that the data that is reliable and trustable is acknowledged by majority of the user in the system, which could be the workers in the federated learning environment, to put the reputation information into the blockchain. So in other words, when one worker compute the reputation. So the reputation will be verified by the other workers in the same system. If the majority of the workers in the system see that the reputation information is the correct version, so that reputation information will be put into the blockchain. So this process is like consensus and proof of work mechanism in blockchain. So we apply the consortium blockchain, uh, which is the blockchain containing multiple authorized nodes, which could be the workers to establish distributed share ledger with the cost, which is not too high as in the public blockchain. So the reputation values of the worker will be securely managed and stored on the consortium blockchain platform that we develop. So the consortium blockchain here will be based on the edge node, which could be the base station or the mobile device itself. So depending on the configuration of the system. 
So for the federated learning training server, so we can see that the step number one will be the task publisher publishment. So the task that the server generate for training the global model will be first broadcast to the specs with the specific data requirement, for example, data size, type, and time length to the workers active and available in the system. Then the mobile devices, which are the candidate of the to be the workers, will send the joining request with the identity and data resource information back to the task publisher. So step number two, the worker selection algorithm will be performed. So the tax publisher will validate the identity and data resource information of the requester. And then the legal or legitimate requester can be selected to be the worker candidate. So the work, the tax publisher or the server will start to select the workers from the uh, worker candidates according to the reputation value calculated by the subjective logic model. So again, this information is assumed to be reliable and trustable because of the blockchain. So the worker candidate with the reputation value above a threshold will be selected accordingly. So the reputation values of the worker candidate are calculated again and stored on the Open Access Consortium blockchain to for the future use. In the step number three, the reputation will be calculated. So the server utilizes the subjective logic model to generate local reputation opinion for the worker candidate based on the historical data. So the subjective logic model take three weight, which we already mentioned before, uh, based on the past interaction into the consideration uh, to form the local opinion for the each worker candidate. And then we combine the local reputation opinion with the recommended reputation uh, score. The task publisher or the server will then generate a composite reputation as the final reputation matrix for each worker candidate. Then the recommended reputation opinion can be downloaded from the reputation blockchain and obtained by the latest block data. Again, the data acquisition that store and put into the blockchain is verified by the workers. Inter step number four, the federated learning will be performed. So the server send the initial model update uh, to the selected worker. The worker collaboratively train the global model by use their own local data. So the local model updates is generated and transmitted to the server or task publisher. So the Local computation time is used to verify the reliability and authenticity of the local model updates uh, to provide a proof of elapsed times model based on the uh, Intel STX technology where we are not going into the detail here. So if you are interested in the detail, please refer to our paper or the Intel white paper of the algorithms. So the poisoning attack detection scheme will be performed here to identify the poisoning attack and unreliable, unreliable worker. So for example, we can apply the reject or negative influence scheme for independent and identically distributed scenario, or we can apply the full goal scheme for the non-IID scenario. So for the summary of the scheme so far, with the help of the proposed algorithm and method, the server will be able to remove the malicious update from poisoning attack and unreliable local model updates from a lazy or untrust, 
a worker. So the server generate a new global model and send the new global model to the selected workers for the next model iteration. So the worker obtain the reward from the task publisher according to their data contribution and model training behavior in the federated learning. And during the federated learning process, either the lazy or unreliable worker or the worker with the poisoning attacker in each model iteration will be recognized, recorded as a negative interaction by the server. And finally, the task publisher will generate a local reputation opinion for the worker based on their performance in the federated learning task. So the, again, the reputation update is the iterative uh, mechanism to achieve secure reputation management, the server interaction histories, and local reputation opinion for the worker with the digital signature are recorded as a transaction and put into the block and uploaded to the pre-select miner in the reputation blockchain. So the miners can be the workers selected from the candidates that we have. So the miners will execute the consensus mechanism and the reputation opinion and interaction history will be stored in the data block and put it into the reputation blockchain platform that we develop. All task publishers can obtain the latest reputation opinion for a certain worker candidate from a reputation blockchain platform. Finally, with the help of the reputation blockchain platform that we have, so the server will be able to select a high quality, high reputation worker with the reliability and trustworthiness for the federated learning task. So this will improve the performance, effectiveness, and efficiency of the federated learning system. So we would like to show some performance evaluation of the, our proposed scheme. So we perform the simulation um, based on the uh, data set that we have and the detail of the evaluation is provided in the references and uh, given so we first evaluate the accuracy of the federated learning process so we can say that we can see that even though there is the attack to the model update uh, which is the poisoning attack but our scheme uh, is able to achieve the accuracy of the learning process still above 80 and 90 percent most of the time depending on the number of attackers in the system. And also, the, we show the dynamics of the reputation value due to the update mechanism that we propose. We can see that when the, some of the workers start malicious behavior, so the reputation of that worker will be reflected and will be recorded in the blockchain system in such a way that the server, when perform the sele uh, worker selection scheme, can effectively or reduce the chance to select the malicious attacker or malicious worker to participate in the machine learning or federated learning training task. So we see the reputation threshold, how it affects the different type of the logic uh, reputation model. So we can see that we apply the different traditional uh, subjective logic and aggregated trust values from the other work. And we can see that our multi-weight subjective logic model can achieve the highest accuracy of the federated learning so in summary, we address the worker selection issue to ensure reliable federated learning in the mobile network. Reputation-based scheme was designed 
and implemented to select reliable and trustable workers. For efficient and secure reputation management, we calculate the reputation of a worker by using multi-weight subjective logic model and employ the consortium blockchain to manage the reputation with temper resistant and non-reputation in the decentralized manner. So the re numerical result and simulation result clearly show that our scheme can effectively and provide a high accuracy of the performance from the federated learning algorithm that we develop. So for the calculation of the multi-weight subjective local, uh, logic model and other detail of the uh, algorithms can be found in the following paper which is published in IEEE Internet of Things Journal. And I would like to thank for your attention.
Hello, scholars. It's an honor to introduce our research here. The title of our article is an outage probability-based channel bonding algorithm for sixth-generation network. I'm Guang Haozhang, one of the authors of the article from Dalian University of Technology, China. I will introduce our research from the following five parts. First, it is a related work and the background of this article. Then I will introduce the key concept of the article, and then I will introduce the OPCB design and the evaluation of the OPCB algorithm. Finally, I will summary our work. First, I will introduce the background. The proposed algorithm in this article is used in MIMO system. There are multiple channels between sender and receiver by using multiple intenters. Which greatly improves the channel capacity. Many wireless networks use MIMO te technology, such as Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6, the fourth generation communication, and the fifth generation communication. MIMO has different specific forms in different networks. The sixth generation network also has the application of MIMO technology. In sixth-generation communication, there are more intenters and higher channel frequencies in MIMO systems. This figure shows the comparison in number of intenters and the frequency of channels of the fourth, fifth, and sixth-generation communication. D2D communication is also one of the hot technologies used in the fifth and sixth communication. It allows users to communicate directly through shared cellular resources, with or without the control of a cellular system. This figure shows a massive MIMO and a D2D system. We can see that the user can communicate with each other using multiple channels, with or without the control of the base stations. As introduced above, in such a system. A reasonable channel bonding strategy is very important. 
uh, studying the reasonable utilization of channel resources is crucial to improve the overall performance of the networks. Channel bounding methods can be divided into static and thematic methods. The static method is obviously not suitable for dramatically changing networks. Some dramatic methods can based, uh, are based on the packet loss rate, which bring unfair and slow feedback problems. Random methods can solve the fairness problem, but the results may not be suitable for our needs. So, so we need a proper channel bounding strategy to improve channel utilization and the transmission throughput. Then I will introduce the outage probability. We need a reasonable metric to indicate the quality of data transmissions. We use outage probability as the metric, according to which determine the number of channels that need to be bounded for the data transmission. Outage probability is an expression of link capacity. Link, uh, it, it means it means the probability that the information quantity i is less than the transmission rate r. In a noise-limited system, it means the probability that the instance SNR is lower than a predetermined threshold SNR, shown as this. The RTH means the threshold SNR depends on the requirements of the receiver, the type of the modulation, and the other factors. We can derive the probability. Uh, we can derive the outage probability based on average SNR of the channel and the noise distribution of the channel. Uh, in a in a in a relay uh, in a relay channel, if there is no relay node, which means the source node commu can communication directly with the destination node, the expression is shown as this. If there is one relay node for transmission, the expression of outage probability is shown as this, where R, R1, R2 means average SNR of channel. Uh, RTH means the means threshold SNR. K1 means the first order modified base L function. We use, we use Monte Carlo method to validate the expressions where SNR is exponentially distributed. We repeat 1,000 times and count the probability that the instance SNR is less than the threshold SNR under different average SNR. And it can be seen the outage probability obtained by the Monte Carlo method after repeating 1,000 times is similar to that calculated by the expression. We can see we can see that the outage probability can be calculated from SNR. SNR is expressed as the received signal power divided by the noise. The received signal power can be calculated by this, where PR refers to the received power, PT refers to the transmit power, GT refers to the gain of the transmitter internal, GR. GR is the gain of the receiving internal, and where LPF mean, means the path loss, that can be calculated by this, where F is the channel central frequency, D is the transmission distance. In these expressions, for a certain system, there are many constants. Finally, SNR is affected by two variables. Uh, transmission power and the transmission distance. It can be known that the outage probability is related to the SNR, which is which in turn is related to the transmission power and the transmission distance. The outage probability is inversely co correlate correlated with the transmission power and positively related to the transmission distance. Therefore, when the transmission is when the transmission distance is large or the transmission power is low, the SNR is relatively low. According to Shannon formula, if the SNR is relatively low, the channel bandwidth can increased can be increased, which means bounding more channels 
to maintain the to maintain the channel capacity. This figure shows the relationship between outage probability, transmission power, and the transmission distance. It can be seen that the the distance that as the distance increases and the transmission power decreases, the outage probability of the data transmission gradually increases. Based on outage probability, we propose that the OPCB algorithm. The C doc code of OPCB is shown in this table. The receiver calculates the outage probability based on the collected transmission power, transmission distance, number of hops, and other information. If the outage probability is larger, and is larger than the set threshold, uh, bound more channels until it is less than the threshold. In order to implement the above algorithm, the base station in sixth generation network needs to exchange CS CSI channels data information and coordinate work. We can use SDN to co to coordinate and to co to coordinate and control the base stations in the certain area to make the data forwarding forwarding between the base stations more efficient. Combining the outage probability with the channel bounding algorithm, we can control the bandwidth to adjust the threshold SNR of the data transmission. If the success rate of data transmission is to be guaranteed, it is necessary to ensure that the average SNR of data transmission is greater than the threshold. We can bound multiple channels for transmission and increases and increases the transmission bandwidth to reduce the threshold SNR. This figure shows comparison of out of outage probability and the bounded channels with or without OPCB algorithm. We can see that in the process of SNR from large to small, using OPCB can control the outage probability to a low lower level. Uh, correspondingly, the number of bounded uh, channels also gradually increases. It can be seen in the process of changing the SNR from 40 dB to 1 dB. When the OPCB algorithm is not used, the outage probability is rapidly increased. When the SNR is about 23 dB, it exceeds 20, uh, 0 0.2. With the SNR gradually decreasing, the outage probability increases rapidly. When using OPCB, the uh, as the SNR is gradually reduced from 40 dB to 1 dB, the outage probability gradually becomes larger. But when the outage probability reaches 0 0.2, multiple channels are bounded for data transmission and outage probability is reduced. As SNR decreases further, the outage probability continues to increase. When outage probability reaches 0 0.2 again, more channels are bounded. Until the SNR is less than about 5, there are, more, uh, there are not enough channels to use for data transmission. It can be seen that OPCB controls the outage probability of data transmission to a small value while saving channel resources as much as possible. The evaluation of this paper is divided into two parts. Firstly, we use MATLAB to compare the transmission rate and bit error rate using OPCB, bounding machines, and normal channel bounding. The, the parameter and the network topology is shown in these figures. U7 communicates with the base station through U6. When using bounding machines, two channels are bounded between U6 and the base station, and one channel is bounded between U7 and U6. And when using normal channel bounding, one channel is bounded between U7 and U6, and one channel is bounded between U7 and U, uh, U6 and the base station. It can be seen that the OPCB algorithm can maintain a high transmission rate and a bit low rate and a low bit error rate. 
Then we use NS3 to simulate and compare the throughput with, with and without the OPCB algorithm. We simulate both single hop and two hop networks. In a single hop network, S1 and S2 uses, use different channels to communicate with the base station. Um, in the two in the two hop network, S1 and D1 perform one data transmission, and S2 and D2 perform another data transmission. The two data transmission uses different channels, and both pass and, and both pass through the relay node N. The other parameters are shown in this figure. Uh, in a single in a single hop network, S2 uses the OPCB algorithm. In uh, and in a two hop network, S2 and D2 uses OPCB algorithm. It can be seen that in both networks, as the transmission distance increases, using OPCB algorithm can reduce the speed of a loss of a loss throughput. The simulation results show that, uh, show that the OPCB algorithm considers the outage probability of data transmission, which will increase the information volume of data trans data transmission channel, achieving a large data achieving a large data transmission rate under the same SNR condition, and improve the transmission throughput. Finally, I will conclude our work. This paper introduced the concept of our uh, the concept of outage probability, analyzes the relationship between outage probability and the influencing factors such as transmit transmission power, transmission distance, and bandwidth. We also we also give re, we also give related expressions. Mm, then we propose a channel bounding algorithm based on outage probability. Simulation results show that in a single in a single hop and multiple hop network topologies, using OPCB algorithms can improve can improve system throughput, data transmission rate, and reduce the data error bit rate. In the following works. We will introduce. We will study the combination of machine learning and channel resources optimization in six in six generation networks. Finally, we refer to the following literatures in our research. Thank you for your listening. Hello, everyone. I'm Han Wenjie, a lecturer, a lecturer in Changsha University and a post doctor student in National University of Defense Technology in China. I'm very glad to present my work to attack strategies of coordinate cyber vehicle attacks for cascading failure. Analysis in uh, in smart grid. This is the outline of my present president. Uh, I will we will I will introduce some background and motivation. The threat to the smart grid is divided into uh, four. Four point uh, four aspects: natural dis uh, disaster, earthquake, floods, typhoon, rainstorm, and so a separate uh, failure, uh, substation malfunction, where disconnect, overload, fails, uh, human uh, factors, faulty op operation, the lack of maintenance. Management missing, and so network attack uh, conclude. Vehicle attack, separate attack, coordinator, uh, separate vehicle attack. This picture, uh, this picture, you know, this picture show that the show that uh, attack uh, event uh, 
this is the time. This is time. Uh, 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 different time. This is different time. And this is different. The uh, different attack uh, include an event. And the, the, this picture shows that the network uh, attacks has um, become a majority uh, threat to the security of a smart grid. It uh, break frost is greater than uh, team uh, fault, and there is often uh, terrible purpose of uh, attack or uh, some political uh, in intents behind it. Uh, network attack different. The, the network attack depends on its attacking strategy. Different uh, attacking strategies may uh, lead to different uh, attack effect. Attack strategies relies on the attackers or uh, resource. If uh, attackers has uh, have uh, limited resource uh, resource, they uh, may uh, select optimal attack strategies. Uh, or if uh, if, uh, else, if the uh, attackers has uh, abundant uh, abundant uh, resource, they may uh, choice uh, saturation attack strategies. The establishment of uh, attack strategies uh, first need to identify attackers. Identify person attackers. The impact of uh, the subsystem R can be used as a uh, 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 evaluate its uh, index visits to uh, identify the potential attackers. Frequent attackers depend on its ID plus ID uh, manuals and uh, impact. ID plus uh, denotes uh, the auto degree and uh, of uh, the uh, dependence and uh, represent a kind of support. Uh, Relationship and the menus uh, uh, denote that uh, denotes the uh, in uh, in degree of depend uh, dependence and uh, re uh, represent a kind of support relationship. The probability of nodes may, uh, being fickle attack goes is uh, uh, described as follow. Several attackers. Depend, uh, depends on its uh, out degree uh, and the in degree out, de out degree and in degree depend uh, dependence uh, degree and uh, is called uh, uh, frequent uh, frequ nodes. The probability the probability of uh, nodes being uh, separate attackers is uh, ascribed as uh, as follow. To uh, the attacking strategies to uh, conclude optimal attack strategies, uh, saturation attack strategies. Optimal attack strategies for coordinate several frequent attacks is to find the optimal attacks across sequence and uh, achieve the effect of exceeding several attack and now filter frequent attack. Saturation attack strategies is to uh, to attack and uh, cover all uh, nodes, exclude uh, repeat uh, repeated attacks. For example, optimal attack, the attack strategies, the attack strategies, uh, one uh, one step uh, is to attack C nine or P uh, P six. Field C uh, field C C nine uh, can cause uh, P six to fail by control man uh, Field P six field P six can can uh, can uh, cause P uh, P seven P eight P nine to fail due to uh, lack of uh, the lack of uh, poor uh, supply and trigger uh, C six C uh, C nine uh, C six C seven C nine failure. Due to the lack of support, 
<coughs> step two is to uh, uh, to attack uh, attack c4 the c4 or p3 fill the c4 can cause p3 the p3 to uh, to fill and uh, trigger uh, uh, p1 p2 failures due to the lack of uh, uh, pause the supply and uh, and lead to the lead to the of uh, the failure of uh, C one C three due to the lack of the C one C three due to lack the lack of um, pause part fill the <coughs> uh, P three uh, can uh, can cause P one P two to fail due to the lack of pause uh, supply and uh, trigger C one C three and C four a failure due to the lack of post, uh, post support. Step 3 is to attack uh, C5 or P5. Fill the C5, the field C5 and trigger P5 failure by control command. Control com command and uh, cause uh, uh, P, uh, P4 to fail due to the lack of uh, post play. Uh, finally, uh, due to the due to uh, the failure of C to C two due to the uh, the lack of a uh, uh, pause part. Uh, failure uh, failure P uh, P five can cause uh, P four can cause P four P four to uh, to fail due to the lack of a pause uh, supply and uh, uh, trigger C. Uh, C five and C two are failing due to the lack of post uh, support. Therefore, we <coughs> therefore we only attack three nodes uh, to paralyze the whole network. Separation attack strategies or uh, attack all the attack all separate, separate nodes named as uh, separate attack uh, attack all. Uh, uh, Attack or you know, power station uh, or substance substation uh, named as uh, physical attack. The physical attack attacks some separate nodes and physical nodes such as uh, C1, C2, C3, C4, uh, P5, P, uh, P6, uh, named as uh, coordinated stable physical attack based on SAS. A uh, three attack mode uh, can overrate all nodes. In all net network, uh, simulate and uh, experiment. Uh, fix a run is uh, so that uh, the network structure of smart grid. Uh, uh, fix a fix a is uh, appropriate. Fix a p is the communication network. Uh, fixed uh, two A uh, is so that uh, the probability uh, probability of uh, substation can uh, be uh, being frequent uh, attackers. Uh, fixed B is uh, threat probability of nodes by uh, separate uh, separate attackers. Fixed fixed three three. Uh, so, so that the CCP based uh, uh, optimal attack strategies. Uh, Fix three, three uh, uh, a so the network uh, network layer network uh, layer and uh, distribute uh, distribution of uh, fake, the physical and stable attack goes so lab so C and uh, lab C and P represent uh, separate and the physical attack goes uh, represent. When the uh, same uh, uh, some uh, pro proportion of uh, node the node are attack, the, the CCP based OAS has a significant better attack effect than uh, P P and C A. According to algorithm two, uh, thirty the. Uh, Thirty separate uh, separate attackers and then uh, physical attackers can be identified in uh, fake uh, fake for 
Hey, which the uh, which has the same attack effect with uh, thirty uh, thirty separate attackers and thirty fake attackers. The tolerance has a great impact uh, on the durability of a smart grid. So we calculate uh, node loss of CCPA based on SAS. Uh, to compare with PA and CA, it's clear that the CCP based on SAS has better effect, attack effect than C and PA regardless, uh, alpha, regardless of alpha uh, equals, equals, equals uh, 0, uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, or 0 and 0 0.5. Uh, this picture, uh, it is the, it is uh, yeah, to see uh, from uh, picture 5. A, 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 B, and C, that uh, the rank of node, node loss of CCPA, the CCPA based on SAS uh, is larger than C, the C, A, and P, and P, A, with at least uh, alpha. That means that CCPA may become a attack model that uh, attackers are willing to uh, choice because it is difficult to defense and uh, has a high, uh, high, high attack effect. Conclusion uh, One is uh, when the sum of the sum number of nodes are attacked, attacked a set of attack sequences can also uh, can always be uh, identified by OAS to achieve a higher attack effect. Two, in order to achieve the same attack effect, the uh, uh, situation attack strategies can find the attack equals of fewer nodes, regardless uh, alpha I, I call 1, uh, 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5, whether based on OS, uh, OSA and OSAS. Uh, CCPA has better effect than if, uh, uh, attack effect than C and PA. Our future is uh, the uh, future work uh, divided into three points. Uh, research the research on and this analyzing effect of uh, different attack equality on separate vehicle uh, system. Identify, uh, identify cases of uh, multiple uh, type of uh, attack uh, strategies. Uh, research on uh, co uh, co cooperative defense mode against uh, CCPA. Thank you for listening. Hello everyone, today I will talk about reinforcement learning based joint task of loading and radio resource allocation for planting assisted vehicular edge computing. Our outline is shown in this slide. The presentation is divided into five parts including introduction, system model, and problem formulation. DDPG based approach, performance evaluation, and conclusion. Firstly, I will introduce the Internet of Vehicles. The Internet of Vehicles is a vital application of the Internet of Things. It is regarded as the information foundation for the next generation of intelligent transportation system with great potential. To reduce the traffic accident rate, as well as improve traffic efficiency and traveling convenience, the amount of intelligent transportation applications have been increasing consistently. However, the current limited computing capability and storage capacity of the onboard equipment may not fully meet the requirements 
about computational complexity and strict delay sensitivity. So vehicular edge computing was born. It combines edge computation and vehicle networks. In this case, com the computation intensive tasks of the vehicles can be offloaded to edge servers in proximity to them instead of the remote cloud servers. And thus, the processing delay of the task will be reduced significantly. Then, I will show the main challenges faced by the VEC and some candidate techniques to overcome such challenges. Compared with the mobile edge computing, VEC has more challenge due to the high mobility and distributed nature of vehicles. And we can't ignore the fact that compared with the smart mobile phones or tablets, vehicles have much powerful computing capacity, and the accurate computing capacity will grow with the number of vehicles. Therefore, if the vehicles can be utilized to provide task of loading services, the computing performance of the vehicular networks will be subsequently improved. As a matter of fact, facing the huge computing requirements for IOV, the computing capacity of a single vehicle is very limited. We have to develop an approach to a aggregate the computing capacity of multiple vehicles to fulfill task uploading requirements. Considering how to centralize the use of multiple vehicles, we use Platoon. And with the rapid development of artificial intelligence, more and more researchers apply reinforcement learning to solve the problem of offloading. So, we apply the reinforcement learning algorithms to the computing resource management for Platoon. The main contributions are summarized in this slide. First, we devised a Platoon-based VEC system model for the tasks of loaded from multiple individual vehicles to reduce system task offloading delay and the energy consumption. Many practical conditions and constraints for the vehicular networks are considered. Next, we formulate an optimization problem for joint task offloading task select target selection, inner platoon radio resource, and computing resource allocation. Third, we propose a DDPG-based joint task of loading decision algorithm by integrating deep natural world networks and reinforcement learning approaches. The next part for our system model, a multi-land scenario is considered. An individual vehicle with requirements can select a proper offloading server an RSU or a Platoon. As shown in this figure, a Platoon consists of a group of vehicles traveling in the same lane and maintaining constant relative velocity. The vehicular network consisting of M roadside units and N Platoons and VIVs that do not belong to any Platoon. Each Platoon has a Platoon leader which is responsible for the resource allocation within the platoon. And we have to coordinate and the computational capability of each server or plat platoon member. The platoon size and the platoon length for platoon are also known. And we give the coordinate and velocity of IVs. Suppose they remain unchanged in each time slot. At each time slot, there are UT vehicles, which have to offload. 
and according to the transmission ranges of the server, we can know the duration of IV staying within the coverage of RSU server. And the platoon server. And the VREL is the relative velocity. In more specific, we introduce the communication model. Let omega introduce denote the spectrum allocation proportion for the J vehicle in plan to I when transporting task U. According to the block fading channel and channel formula, we know the SNR and uplink data rate of a vehicle that chooses to offload its tasks to the server via a virus link. And the computation model, I and C stand for the size of computation input data and the total number of CPU cycles needed to accomplish the task respectively. And rho denotes the offloading decision. As for plan two, the task will first be offloaded to the leader, then the leader completes the secondary offloading of the task. And theta denotes the task allocation proportion for the J's vehicle in plan to I when offloading task U. If offloading to RSU, we can calculate the communication time and energy consumption. And these are the computation, ta computation execution time and the energy consumption. As for plan to server, the communication time between the vehicle which has task and the leaders are shown. The communication time within the plan tune and the computation execution time are also given, and those are the corresponding energy consumption. According to the introduction below, the total energy consumption and time delay are shown to be this. and the corresponding optimization problem can be formulated as follows. To minimize the energy consumption and time delay, and those are the constraints. The first one denotes one task can only offload to one server. The second one and the third one is the resource allocation constraints. And the next two guarantees the computation capacity constraint. And the next one ensure the transmission power constraint. The last one denotes the SNR constraint. Next, I will introduce DDPG-based approach. It follows the target network and experience replay technology in the DQN algorithm, using two deep Q network in the algorithm. One is actor network, and the other is critic network. The actor network is used to approximate the policy function and the critic network used to approximate the value function. The actor realizes the output of the continuous action values, and the critic evaluates the execution effect of the action. We formulate the task as a Markov decision process. It has a four tuple state, action, reward function, and transition function. And in our model, we denote the state and action in each time slot like this. And the reward function is like this. 
The algorithm parameters include the replay memory D, the total time slot T, the number of servers and vehicles which have ta tasks to offload, discount factor, and learning rate. After initializing the parameters, the decision of task offloading and resource allocation ex is executed at the beginning of each episode T. The system will choose an action with random noise and T and then receive the reward and turn to the next state. Furthermore, the parameters of the network will be updated. In the next, we evaluate the performance of the proposed joint task offloading decision algorithm, like JTO. And for performance comparison, we present two benchmark schemes. RSU task offloading scheme, which named as RTO, and other vehicles task offloading scheme named as VTO. As shown in this picture, we can know all the three task offloading schemes can approach their stable point as the number of episodes increase, and RTO has the highest delay. Because the RSU layout and road may be sparrows, and the distance is longer than that between vehicles, and the channel quality is more easily affected. VTO can reduce latency since the possibility of connection interruption during transmission is less due to the relative speed between vehicles. And we can know overproposed JTO scheme can yield the lowest delay as compared to the other benchmark schemes. In this slide, we show the comparison of the three schemes' energy consumption. We can also know in this picture the highest energy consumption is caused by VTO. The reason is that the computation capability of the vehicles is much smaller than that of RSU. And the JTO scheme has the lowest delay and the energy con consumption because JTO scheme combines the advantages of the other two schemes. And this picture depicts the overall cost of those three proposed schemes, including the delay and the energy consumption with different amount of tasks in the system. As the number of tasks increase, increases the energy consumption and delay of the whole system increase. When there are fewer tasks, VTO is lower than RTO. When the task of ta number of tasks increases, the contrary is, in, is the case. The first one is because it uses vehicle collaboration. The second one is because many tasks in V2V have to be offloaded to vehicles with poor communication quality, so its consumption increases rapidly. And JTO has the best performance because it can choose RSUs and Platoons as server adaptively. Next part is my conclusion. We introduced a Platoon-based VEC mechanism which make use of computing capabilities of both Platoons and edge computing enabled RSU. Next, we make a joint optimization of task offloading target selection and inner Platoon resource allocation. The last one is, compared with other benchmark schemes, overproposed scheme significantly reduces task of loading latency and energy consumption, and especially in the case with a large number of tasks. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you.
Hello, all online participants. I'm Hu Zixiang, a graduate from the Department of Communication Engineering, Harbin Institute of Technology, Weihai. It's my great honor to present my research at the third EAI International Conference on 6G for Future Wireless Networks. Other scholars participating in the study also include Associate Professor Ma Luofei, Professor Liu Gongliang, etc. Finally, my thanks also go to National Natural Science Foundation of China and Shandong Province Natural Science Foundation for partial support. All right, let's get down to business. The title of my paper is a joint scheduling scheme for relay involved D2D communications with imperfect channel in serial systems. First, the research background of this paper is introduced, and then the joint scheduling problem of multi mode D2D communication involving relay equipment in imperfect channel is studied deeply. The mathematical model is established and the corresponding joint scattering algorithm is given. Finally, some conclusions are drawn based on the simulation results. In order to cope with the massive connected devices and a huge amount of data transmission in the fifth generation serial system, D2D communication is proposed to achieve better performances in terms of spectrum e efficiency and system capacity, which opens new horizons of device-centric communication. For two D2D capable user equipments who are relatively close to each other in the cell, their da data can be transmitted directly without forwarding through the base station under the unified scheduling. The introduced D2D pairs can switch the communication mode flexibly and make efficient use of the limited wireless resources so as to achieve the significant improvement of data transmission performance of serial system under comfortable interference. The innovation of this paper lies in the addition of relay equipment and the imperfect channels in D2D communications and the anal analysis of relay selection, access control, power coordination, mode selection, and other sub problems in the scheduling. In the process of solving mode selection or power cooperation, existing papers assume that the base station can acquire perfect channel state information of all relevant links. However, in the actual situation, part of the channel state information can be obtained through channel estimation, but there's still some channel gain acquisition needs to be spending a lot of signaling overhead. If the number of serial user equipments and the D2D pairs are large enough, the signaling overhead cannot be ignored, and the assumption of a perfect channel state information is no longer reasonable. In order to better model the actual communication environment, we partially introduce imperfect channel to replace the traditional perfect channel. As shown in the figure, the channel market in red is an imperfect channel, and its channel gain can be divided into pass 
loose component and the fading component, among which fading component can be modeled as a random variable obeying probability distribution. This change will result in the calculation of data transmission and access control being different from that of the perfect channel. This slide shows several modes for occupying channel resources, much as in previous papers. Serial users and D2D users can occupy a sub-channel alone, while D2D users who are far away from each other can be assisted by a relay device for transmission. Their data rate formula is shown on the right. But for the multiplexing mode, the gain under the imperfect link is a random variable. In calculating the amount of data transferred, we use the expected value of mathematics instead of the determined formula, which is an integral value of the probability variable. Taking the full rotate scenario as an example, we take maximizing the total throughput of the sale as a goal to find the best power location strategy and user mode under the constraints of SINR and power. It's important to know that any user can only be in one mode and under light road scenarios, the constraint of the number of free channels needs to be considered. Because of, the, because of the objective function is too complex and the optimization variable is an integer of 0 or 1, the traditional optimization theory cannot be solved effectively Therefore, we design a joint scheduling algorithm based on this problem. By dismantling the problem step, step by step, the original problem is gradually reduced to a problem that can be easily solved. Firstly, we take the total amount of data transferred in the relay mode at the quitterian to select the best relay and determine the relay equipment to be selected for each pair of D2D users. In his thesis, Dr. Fong proposed to judge whether a D2D user can access with a certain acceptable outage probability by using the shortest access distance. The thesis will also draw on his idea. As for the power coordination problem, in the most basic, basic multiplexing relationship, there are two power values that need to be optimized, namely the power of serial user equipment and the source D2D user equipment. Their values constitute a two-dimensional interval, and the constraints cut them into shapes in the figure. It's easy to see that the point of optimal power value can only be taken at the extre extreme boundary point. A mode, a mode involving relaying can be seen as two implement, implementa implementations of the underlying reused relationship, and the conclusion is consistent with the above. Okay, after the above steps, if the constraint doesn't meet, the mode selection coefficient is directly set to zero, so that the constraint conditions are further simplified. However, the optimization variable is still an integer, 
which is not conductive to the practical solution. We find that the constraint matrix satisfies the condition of totally unimodular matrix, which enables us to transfer the original, original integer programming into linear programming. And it can be proved that this kind of relaxation doesn't produce the optimization gap. The form of the remaining optimization problem is very simple, and many major algorithms can be used to solve it efficiently. In the light road scenario, although the TUM condition is no longer satisfied, the original algorithm is still feasible because the solutions are all integer points. This slide shows a schematic of the user distribution and the main parameters used. We mainly compare the effect of the number of idle channels and the introduction of imperfect channels and relay existed D2D mode, mode in this problem on this problem. Finally we got we get some simulation results. The first group is the system capacity change with, uh, with maximum transmitted power curve. About the two pictures are full road scenarios and uh, light road. It can be seen that two variables are positively related and the, and the introduction of the relay, the increase in the number of idle channel will bring to the system capacity to ascend and the value under imperfect imperfect channel is more close to the real situation. The follow is it appears as an independent variable. The more D2D users, the more space to choose and the more improvement. In the case of light road on the right, it can also be seen that the relative size of the number of free channels and the digital pairs will affect the inflection point of the curve. This group investigates the influence of this distance between digital users. The closer the distance is, the larger the system capacity will be improved, and the more relays, the more obvious the effect will be. Although this paper gives a better solution to the problem of D2D serial communication combined scattering under imperfect channels, it can improve the system performance to some, to some extent. However, there are many aspects that can be further studied in the future, such as whether there are other modeling methods for imperfect channels, whether relays can be used for more complex cooperative communication, and the, and the, and the relays can be used for and the delay effect of relay, relays can be considered in relay mode. Can the multiplex objects be different users? And can the multiplex channels be extended to downlink channels? How to schedule multi sale and so on? These are the problems worth further exploring in our future work. These are the main issues to be introduced in this paper. If you have any, if you have other ideas or seek for cooperation, you can contact us in the following ways. That's all. Thank you. to be
be here and make her presentation. I'm Sun Zhenming from China University of Mining and Technology Beijing Company. Today, the topic of this presentation is research on common gas safety evaluation based on DSC evidence theory data fusion. My presentation will be divided into the following six parts. Now let me show you the introduction. China is a country with a large coal uh, consumption and production, where a large proportion of the production mines is related to the high gas mines. Coal mine gas safety evaluation has always been a key tool for coal mine safety management. Through monitoring the environmental data, in the coal mine and the correct identification of gas safety. Autobust gas accumulation and explosion can be effectively prevented with important theoretical significance and practical value for suppress the gas disasters occurrence and endorse the safe and sustainable development of the coal industry. Presently, safety evaluation techniques can be classified into qualitative and quantitative safety evaluation methods. The qualitative evaluation process is simple, but the difference is in the professional background and the operational capability of various participants may lead to differences in safety assessment. The quantitative safety assessment using the obtained inductors or laws based on your numerous experimental results or extensive statistical analysis of accident data for quantify the status of the production systems, processes, equipment, environment, facilities, personnel, and management. There are some existing assessment approaches for common safety evaluation, such as the improved fuzzy theory methods, improved swarm intelligence, and other techniques. More and more practical applications are available with the intelligent algorithm in the field of engineering. So based on the DS evidence theory, a coma gas safety evaluation model is proposed. Uh, it's proposed to automatically get more accurate safety situation information, which could assist uh, coma safety management. This, uh, these are the model contents. Now let me introduce uh, in more detail. First, uh, weighted list uh, square support uh, vector machine. The evaluation model de uh, developed in this paper is aimed at the common gas safety assessment after a definite time. It's essential to obtain the predicted value of the monitoring vari uh, variables as the input of the model. So, weighted list uh, squares support vector machines proposed by Sokins in terms of the LSSVM is used to obtain the predicted value. This is a paper from Sokins. Uh, the algorithm is directly used to obtain prediction data, and there is no improvement in my paper. Here are the relevant formula. If you are interested, please check the paper just mentioned. I won't go into details here. Uh, improve the dumpster shifter index theory. Dumpster shifter evidence theory has strong uh, applicability in data fusion. However, there are still some deficiencies in the interfering process in dealing with the uncertain problem. It is mainly meant Manifested in the explosive problem, in uh, the independent problem between the evidence, 
the limited problem of recognition framework and the problem of complicating evidence fusion. In this study, the enhancement of DS evidence theory is mostly considered to solve the problem of conflicting evidence sources. Uh, the contents of these slides are the basic principles of DS evidence theory. The recognition framework is uh, expressed in this uh, equation. Uh, in the gas safety evaluation system, all possible categories constitute a recognition framework. So the recognition framework in includes all possible results of a particular problem. In the equation x i x s one x two x three represents a possible result of the gas evaluation, and zeta is the uncertainty. The second equation is a basic probability assignment function, BPA. X is the recognition framework. Uh, if M is between 0 and 1 and satisfy, and satisfy the equation, M is called the BPA of the X, of the recognition framework. In this equation, A is the element in the recognition framework. For any A belongs to A, M A is the basic belief, which indicates uh, the degree of trust in position A. The third equation is the belief function. And the belief function represents the degree of trust of a certain thing. It's incomplete and untrustworthy to only use the belief function to describe the possibility of an event. So this is the likelihood function. In DS evidence theory, the likelihood function is a mirror used to express the degree of distrust of an event. As mentioned before, the improvements we did are mainly used to solve the problem of conflicting evidence resource. Now let's talk about the improvements. The first are the evidence-based improvements. Modifying the evidence source can reduce the effect of interference factors on the fusion assessment results and improve the evaluation results accuracy. In this study, the idea of assign waste is uh, utilized to allocate each evidence's importance to increase the reliability of the evidence on the decision result and uh, weaken the effect of conflicting evidence. First, the distance between MI and uh, MJ is calculated using this uh, formula. Uh, this distance function with a better reflection explains the focal element and the reli uh, reliability between pieces of evidence, and better determine the conflict between pieces of evidence. Then the similarity between MR and MJ is calculated using this formula. The smaller the distance between the pieces of evidence, the higher the motor support. The degree of support for evidence can be stated by the sum of other evidence. The degree of support for evidence MI, uh, using, uh, is calculated using this formula. The distance similarity matrix between pieces of evidence is utilized to allocate various ways to each sensor to meet the purpose of modifying the evidence resource of uh, evidence source to prevent the conservative revised evidence source and the losses or the advantages of the original evidence. This study adopts to Retain the original set of more uh, 
correct, correct the evidence to guarantee the impact of data fusion. Those two formulas show that how to calculate the weight and uh, the modified uh, BPA. The second improvements are the improvements based on fusion ruler. The simple modification of the evidence source data to prevent a high conflicts between the pieces of evidence may result in the revised evidence to lose the effective information of the original evidence. The conflict allocation coefficient is introduced based on the fusion rules to enhance the decision stage accuracy. These are these are the original DS evidence fusion rulers. The conflict allocation coefficient omega can be expressed as this formula. And the enhanced formula of DS evidence zero fusion rulers are shown in this formula. Here's the third part, uh, the, the fourth part of this presentation. A construction of gas safety evaluation model. And first, the construction of recognition framework. According to the common safety regulations and the value range of characteristic parameters and the specific, specific conditions. The gas safety state is divided into five states, no danger, mild danger, moderate danger, serious danger, and uh, uncertain. Now the picture shows the construction of gas safety evaluation model. First, uh, collect uh, various uh, sensor monitoring data from the working phase monitoring system. Then, process the data by a uh, prediction model, such as WSSVM mentioned before. Third, get the basic uh, BPA data and uh, analyze the conflict between evidence. After that, uh, do the data fusion using our improved evidence and the fusion rulers. At the end, we'll get the safety evaluation results of Coleman gas. That's the Coleman gas safety evaluation model's data processing flow. The fifth part is the case analysis. Those are the data sources of our command. This is the predicted results. Let's talk about the constructs of analysis of conflict degree. A9 is revised from 0.0.8079 to 0.4622. to assess 
uh, the safety centers of common gas. This is the comparative analysis of evaluation results. The blue one, yes, is the original DS having this theory. The yellow line is the modified method of having this sources. DS2, the modifying method of the sources and the fusion ruler. According to the left finger, the fusion evidence sources E1 and E2 are all highly conflicting pieces of evidence. As the decision results of DS and DS1 are invalid and the DS2 is uncertain. By introducing the evidence source E3 in this figure, the recognition results of DS1 and DS are wrong, and the DS2 evidence theory recognition result is accurate. This proves um, that the enhanced fusion ruler in this paper are effective in retaining the reversed evidence source. In this figure, DS result is inaccurate. DS1 and DS2 results are accurate. Proving that the modified technique of the evidence source enhanced in this paper is correct. It can eliminate the inter-evidence high conflict. Those two fingers show that the DS2 technique for modifying the evidence source and the theory rulers in this paper is reasonable. The recognition occurs of the DS2 evidence theory is higher compared to the DS1 and DS. This is the model uncertainty mirror. Uh, this paper utilizes the channel entropy for mirroring the uncertainty. Uh, from the picture, we can show that the enhanced DS2 has a lower uncertainty compared to DS and DS1 and can better assess the safety of common gas. Now the conclusion. By obtaining the predicted value of each sensor, the basic probability assignment function of each sensor is determined to utilize the posterior probability modeling method. A safety evaluation model of common gas data is made and uh, multi-sensor data, multi data fusion is realized. Fusing more sensors, the evaluation results are more accurate. Regarding the problem of evidence fusion failure caused by high conflict data, this paper represents the similarity for modifying the evidence source of conflict data which effectively decrease the conflict between the pieces of evidence, at the same time to prevent distorting of evidence sources, the conflict of assignment coefficients are presented to enhance the fusion rulers, and the accuracy of evaluation results is improved. It proves that the enhanced DS evidence theory has better generalized ability and higher accuracy for common gas safety evaluation. It could provide a theoretical basis for gas disaster accident prevention. That's all. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. I am Liu Lixin from Tianjin University of Science and Technology. My topic today is sports pose estimation based on LSTM and attention mechanism. I will introduce it in four parts. Part one: Instruction. In our life, we often need to estimate the accuracy of sports pose, which usually costs a lot of time and. Human resources. To solve the problem, we propose a LSTM attention model. In spatial dimension, we use the two-branch multi-stage CN to extract human joints and features, which not only guarantees the real-time performance but also ensures the accuracy. For the time dimension, the extracted joint feature sequence is input into LSTM attention model for training. Part two, model design. The traditional model of pose estimation is top down, which refers to detecting the human body air first, and then detecting the key points of the human body in the air, because it's necessary to perform forward key point detection for each. Detected the human body air, the speed is slow. Therefore, someone presents the first bottom-up representation of association scores while a uh, part of finity fields, a set of two-dimension vector fields that encode the location and the orientation of limbs over the image domain. domain. Based on the detected joint、um, points and the part of finity fields, using the Grady inference algorithm, these these joint points can be mapped to different individuals. The network is divided into two branches. The top、uh, the top branch predicts.、Uh, The confidence maps and the bottom branch practice the affinity fields. The image is the first input to VGG19 generating a set of future maps F, which is input to the first stage of each、um, branch. The recurrent neural network is a network structure which can express the time sequence well in deep learning, and the best one is LSTM, because LSTM operates on sequences. Multi-layer LSTM stacking can increase the level of abstraction of the input. When time t increases, the store、uh, can be observed in blocks. Or the representation pro- problem on different time scales can make、uh, the network extract more abstract features. Therefore, this paper use,、uh, uses multi-layer LSTM stacking to extract、uh, features in the in temporal domain. The mo- motion posture evaluation. Problem we studied is a typical timing problem. That is, the value of certain time、uh, moment is affected by the previous moment of、uh, several moments. This is the LSTM internal structure. LSTM.、Um, this picture shows. Shows the LSTM classification model, in which the input layer is a corresponding video frame vector, and the upper layer of the input layer is a for forward、uh, LSTM layer, which is composed of a series of LSTM units. The results of the addition and the averaging of LSTM outputs at、uh, all times are then used as the as the upper layer representation. Finally, through the sof-、uh, soft max layer, the full connection op- 
operation is carried out, then the practice category Y is obtained. Attention uh, mechanism is widely used in the field of image processing and uh, uh, natural language processing. Various attention me uh, mechanisms have been proposed by researchers, and the recognition effect is remarkable. We introduced the attention mechanism to LSTM, which can extract its own future information from the input sequence and find the internal relationship between the future information. It can output the recognition result by VYT the average, which improves the recognition accuracy of the uh, model. Next is an uh, experiment. Um, First, we, we did the data collection and the processing. Um, first, we record uh, all the actions into video. The collected video data is divided into six categories, which are push up uh, front and side, sit, uh, sit up front and side, pull up front and side. Uh, secondly, we extract a frame every six frames of the video. That is extract about five frames of an uh, image per second. Last, we cut out the main part of human behavior in the picture. This is a um, data set uh, samples. After data collection, we need to process the collected data to extract the um, feature points. First, we need to classify the images. The, cap uh, the captured images are manually marked and the sequence of pictures marked and the same action is placed in the same folder. And second, we mark each type of action and divide it into standard action and non-standard work action. We use the model of the two-branch multi-stage CN to extract 17 joint filters of each image to into one-dimensional vector and store them in the CSV file. The extracted information includes joint points, identification, relative coordinates, and confidence, so that 68 nodes of information stored into one dimension vector can be extracted from a picture. Last, we take 10 frames and a sequence to make the data set of the model, that is the joint, joint uh, points data of every 10 frames is used and the input of the model. Finally, we have cropped uh, an 80-44 data sequences in total. The joint information extracted is relative coordinates, uh, that is the coordinates Coordinates uh, relative to the length of and the uh, width of the picture in order to improve the generalization ability of the model. We cut the sequences, sequence picture randomly during the process of extracting joint points to ensure that the relative positions of joint points Joint points change in re in turn, so as to uh, expa expand the data set. This is the amount of uh, data sequence. This is the sequence data. We perform the experiment with the following implemented. Details. First, we read the data from the TF record fi files file 
and、uh, put it into the memory buffer. Then read a training group randomly with the batch size of one hundred twenty-eight. This training group is put into the LSTM attention model to perform training operations. Then we calculate the loss and use the optimizer back propagation to reduce the loss and adjust the network parameters of each layer. The optimizer we use is a And、um, optimizer provided by TensorFlow. The and、um, these two picture shows the accuracy changes and the loss changes. So we can find that after two、uh, thousand batches, the model begins to coverage the the accuracy gradually、uh, increase and the loss、uh, gradually. Decrease. These two pictures shows the and、uh, whether is this is a action is a standard action or non-standard action. The last part is the conclusion. We propose a sports and、um, pose estimation method based on. LSTM attention network structure. Firstly, we use the two-branch multi-stage CNN to extract human joints and a spatial features. Secondly, the extracted joint features sequence is in put in to LSTM attention model to get the temporal features. The attention mechanism which can adaptively Learn detailed spatial temporal attention feature to enhance the action recognition at each step of LSTM. Finally, we do some experiment to verify our proposal. The result proves proves that the recognition accuracy and the loss of this method can reach a good state, which proves that the method proves. So、the in this paper has cer、uh, certain significance and value. Later, we will further improve the performance of the method for video data in、um, complex environment. We can expand expand the training set by collecting data、uh, sets in a variety of complex environments and try to solve the problem of in. Surface center general generalization ability by enhancing the pictures of the training set. And thank you for listening. Uh, hi everyone, thanks very much for your lesson. It's my great pleasure to make this presentation and share my research with you. I'm from Beijing, China, the Peking University.、Uh, now let's start with my research topic titled Three-Dimensional Online My Ventilation Simulation System Based on GIS. Okay.、Uh, here is the outline. I will give my presentation from these five aspects. Uh, first, I will briefly introduce the、uh, introduction of this paper.、Uh, as we all know, that an efficient coal mine ventilation system is the guarantee of the safety production in the underground coal mine system. And uh, uh, nowadays, with the rapid development of the intelligent mine based on、uh, based on the state of the art technology. It is highly required to realize the intelligent construction of coal mine ventilation system in the complex environment,、uh, which aims to provide reliable and、uh, accurate、uh, decision support for the safety production of the underground coal mine system. And、uh, here、uh, is the three-dimensional laneway network. 
and uh, uh, as for the uh, traditional data processing of my vaccination system, uh, which is difficult to satisfy the demand of the intelligent construction of my vaccination system. Uh, for instance, uh, for instance, uh, Vent Graph and Mind Fire Simulation software uh, are developed by Polish Ac Academy of Sciences, which are two widely used uh, systems around the world. Uh, and uh, VanSim is a uh, uh, software with wider attention, which is developed by uh, Australia. And besides, besides uh, there are also some uh, famous uh, vaccination software developed by the US and the UK and also there are some successful domestic uh, vaccination softwares are also developed uh, with uh, complex functions such as MVSS and FIRE developed by China University of uh, Money and Technology. Um, besides, there are also some uh, Vaccination softwares uh, such as Vent Anony, uh, developed by Core Science and Technology Research Institute. Uh, these are all some traditional uh, traditional my vaccination softwares. Uh, uh, however, as we all know that my vaccination system is a typical geographical environment, uh, which means the laneway network model has geospatial attribute data and uh, topological relation. Um, uh, with this consideration, the geographic information system technology is one of the most effective technology methods to manage the geospatial data of the mind vaccination system. Uh, correspondingly, uh, the, there are some uh, vaccination softwares uh, which are developed based on GIS technology. For example, LoRaN GIS platform is developed by Beijing LoRaN Technologies with vaccination function and uh, has its own intellectual property right. Uh, besides, uh, LKGIS and VRMind GIS platform are or some successful domestic systems developed by vaccination function. Um, uh, in addition, uh, there are also some secondary developed vaccination management systems based on uh, all the CD or uh, Arxis. Uh, however, uh, we, all know, we know that on CD is difficult to deal with spatial uh, topological relationship and uh, the spatial attribute database, uh, uh, which uh, so it is difficult to provide decision support with location-based information. Uh, yeah. uh, while uh, the application of GIS combined with vaccination system effectively improved the deficiency of all the CAD. Uh, that's why we uh, adopted GIS in our study. Um, <clears throat> and uh, besides, uh, in order to satisfy the requirement of the mind vaccination system, uh, <clears throat> in order to satisfy the requirement of the um, intelligent construction of my vaccination system, it is necessary to implement the online vaccination simulation to provide uh, fast or real-time decision support. Uh, these are our purpose <coughs> of this uh, of this research. <coughs> um, so this study aims to implement the online simulation of vaccination system to provide fast or real time simulation result for decision support. Uh, he has four uh, aspects considered and conducted in this study. Mm, firstly, we described the numerical solution method based on circuit wind flux method and the Scott-Hensley uh, algorithm 
And uh, secondly, we describe we dis uh, we designed the data structure of the Linway network model and the ventilation data model. Uh, thirdly, a prototype simulation system of three-dimensional mine ventilation at web end is designed and developed based on GIS technology. Uh, finally, the experiment is conducted, which demonstrated that the system is efficient to provide real-time research <coughs> for Ethereum support. Uh, okay, let's start with the second uh, section, uh, the ventilation network model. Uh, we know that mine ventilation is a daily work in coal mine production, which has to be accurately simulated to master the actual situation of ventilation. The simulation result can be an important guideline to adjust and control the wind and optimize the ventilation system. This uh, this section we, in this section, we described the basic steady state solution of circuit wind flux method with the Scott Hensley algorithm. Um, for a simple schematic diagram of ventilation network model, uh, which is shown here, and uh, these are three air uh, airflow laws can be described as the equations uh, one, two, three. <clears throat> and the, in, this, uh, in this model, the basic steady state solution of a circuit wind flux method with Scott Hensley algorithm is described. Uh, the specific calculation idea is as follows, is as follows. Uh, firstly, uh, take a group of air volume of a basic circuit in the ventilation network graph as the unknown uh, variable. I establish and establish the basic control equations according to the three laws of airflow. And secondly, uh, we need to solve the circuit air volume. And finally, uh, to calculate the branch air volume, branch ventilation resistance, and other unknown variables from the circuit air volume. Okay, this is the uh, idea for our ventilation network model. Uh, with this model, we uh, designed a prototype system. Uh, here, uh, let me uh, introduce the system design section. Okay, the prototype system developed in this study is named as three-dimensional vent cloud. Uh, the front end of the web system is developed by HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. The three-dimensional visualization function is developed based on 3 3.js. 3, 3 the backend model and uh, algorithm of the network uh, ventilation network is developed by Python and uh, C++. The, and the web page frame is con The web page frame is constructed by Tornado, which is used as a server to transmit data from the front end of the web system. Uh, this picture uh, shows the architecture of a three-dimensional vent cloud system. The prototype system consists of three layers from bottom to top, uh, which are uh, technology layer, service layer, and application layer, respectively. Uh, as for the technology layer, this layer covers all the key technologies in the process of system construction, which includes the data source and the mine ventilation model and algorithm. The data source includes the centerline data of the whole Linway network and the geographical attribute data of the Linway and uh, the geo and uh, nodes, which are stored in the GIS database or stored as GeoJSON format. The mine ventilation model includes the topological relationship generation model and the ventilation network simulation model. These models jointly build the mine ventilation network solution model. 
library and uh, constitute the technical core of the system. The second layer is the uh, service layer. This layer uses Tornado as the service architecture, and uh, the web socket interface is applied to connect the JavaScript front, front end with the back end Python and the uh, C++ program to implement the data transmitter. The third layer is application layer. This layer dis uh, place the three-dimensional visualization result in the form of a graphical interface at the web page end. Uh, the system can also read the geographic, ge geospatial centerline data and uh, attribute data of any mine when they network and displays the model, three-dimensional model, and generate the STL file of the Linway model. Uh, this uh, the application layer will be uh, introduced uh, later in detail. This is a uh, system design. Okay, uh, based on the vaccination network model and uh, the system development, uh, we obtain the simulation result. Uh, firstly, uh, this study connected the laneway and uh, ventilation network data from Xintiao coal mine, which is located in Henan province, China. This coal mine was chosen primarily due to the accessibility of a continuous monitored data. The Xintiao coal mine laneway network has uh, uh, has 219 laneway branches and uh, 222 nodes. Here is a study area of a Xintiao coal mine. Um, okay, the geospatial and attribute data of Xintiao coal mine laneway network includes uh, laneway ID, laneway name, the coordinates and uh, ID of the start node and end node, the area, the cross section area, and uh, parameter of the laneway, um, and also the laneway less when drag. Uh, vaccination resistance, uh, coefficient of friction resistance, and uh, limit type. Uh, here, uh, in this uh, in this table, it shows some of the vaccination attribute data for the combined laneway. Okay, based on the uh, laneway network data and uh, the system developed. Uh, uh, in this study, the three-dimensional laneway network model of Xintiao coal mine is read and displayed by this system. Uh, besides, um, by establishing the topological structure of the laneway ne uh, network graph of Xintiao coal mine, the shortest path uh, algorithm is developed to store to sort the to sort the laneway wind resistance. So, uh, one minimum spanning tree and uh, uh, seventy cold tree branches of the ventilation network graph are generated. And also, uh, by adding the cold tree branches as additional tree branches to the minimum spanning tree, uh, seventy circuits are formed respectively, which is called the independent circuit of the ventilation network graph. And then, based on the vaccination simulation model, the air volume of each laneway is obtained with a, within a few seconds, which can provide fast or real-time result at web end for the decision support afterwards. And also, uh, the laneway uh, network model of Xinqiao coal mine is rendered with simulation result, which is displayed, uh, which is displayed here based on the three-dimensional vent cloud system. And also, by uh, clicking on different laneway branches, the geospatial query can be connected and displayed on web page. Okay, here is the uh, simulation result and the three-dimensional visualization of this uh, research. Finally, and finally, we will conclude this paper. Okay, this study investigated the mine ventilation simulation model and developed a prototype web system to implement the online ventilation system. 
the system is designed and developed based on web technology and the numerical simulation uh, method is developed and, uh, also, and is also uh, be integrated with the web system. Uh, the, the experimental result of this study demonstrated that this web system is effective to providing uh, to provide fast or real-time vaccination simulation results and is expected to guide the real-time decision support for coal mine safety protection. Okay, uh, that's all my uh, presentation and uh, thanks for your listening and uh, Okay, thanks very much for your time.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Sherman Shen from University of Waterloo. Today, I'm going to talk about reinforcement learnings for resource management in space, air, ground, integrate vehicular network. Vehicular communications networks have attracted a lot of attention recently, not only from the academia, industries, but also governments, due to its significant impact to our daily life. V2X means to make vehicle exchange information with everything, including vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, vehicle to pedestrian, vehicle to cloud, and the vehicle to sensor, etc. With the V2X information, such as vehicle speed, location, lane change, etc., can be exchanged among neighboring vehicles so that road safety can be enhanced since drivers can get early warning so vehicle collisions can be avoided. Congestion can also be relieved due to better traffic management, such as traffic light control, street light management, intersection movement assistance. Environment become more friendly since vehicles spend less amount of time on the road so that less CO2 emissions will be released. In addition, V2X can bring other applications such as smart parking, on-road entertainment, location-related advertisement. However, the challenges are V2X communications require a lot of wireless resource due to large amount of data traffic. The reason is that V2X communications is a typical heterogeneous machine and a human type coexist communications. Currently, each vehicle has about 40 to 150 sensors, and this number is expected to be doubled in the near future. The data traffic generated by those sensors is about 750 megabit per second. In addition, human type traffic data keep increasing due to the requirement of the on-road infotainment and the location-based services. In addition, the vehicle high mobility and the unreliable channels make it difficult to satisfy the strict quality of service requirements of different vehicular services. Furthermore, the human driving behavior, such as fatigue driving, under influence driving, distracted driving, aggressive driving, are another reason to make unsafe driving. To address those issues, automated driving was introduced recently, that is, to use machine to replace human to drive the vehicle. From the uh, system point of view, the input of driving system is the information of driving environment obtained through eye observation. Then the driver takes actions based on the decision from the brain with the driver's skill and the experience to control the car, including speed, braking, and the steering, etc. For automated driving, the perception is conducted through high techniques such as camera, Linda, etc. In addition, the collect driving behavior data, GPS, and the high dimensional maps are used for the computer to make automate driving decisions. 
since the automated driving mainly depends on the computer vision to learn the driving environment, there are plenty of challenges unsolved due to confusing traffic lights, bad weather, fading lanes, etc. The V2S communication can make automated driving safer, easier, and smarter. With the V2X, vehicles can get the global information of traffic and make global optimization together through cooperation. This can significantly improve sensing ability, accuracy, reliability, as well as traffic efficiency. On the other hand, sensing intelligence of vehicles can relieve the V2X communication workload, enhance communication reliability and efficiency. Since automated driving vehicles can obtain a lot of information locally, which can significantly reduce V2X information exchange. In addition, local message sensing is more reliable due to less transmission delay and the potential communication attacks. With less message sharing, the privacy can be better protected. Also, automated driving is more regulated and can be controlled. With automated driving based on communications, computing, and sensors, the driving becomes safer, more convenient, clear, and cooperative. The Society of Automotive Engineers of America, or SAE, has proposed the sixth level of automated driving from level zero, that is no automation, to level five, full automation. The difficulty from one level to another level is four. Currently, the main development in automated driving focuses on level two and the level three automations. There is still a long way to achieve full automation. The reason for that is in order to achieve full automation, seamless network coverage is necessary in order to guarantee service continuity. In addition, robust and flexible resource management, management is required in order to ensure sufficient resource during the rush hour or special event, less wasting of resource during off-peak hour. The current problem is that the network coverage is very insufficient. Here, we are seeing two maps. One is Canadian map, one is Chinese map. In the map, the color, colored area represents the area covered by the network. By looking at the maps, we can see the current network coverage for Canada is about 20%, and the network coverage area for China is less than 40%. This is due to many reasons, such as the cost, offshore, mountains, etc. In addition, the traffic depends on time, such as rush hour, off peak hour, location, downtown, urban, events, etc. In order to address those issues, we introduce space air ground integrate networks. This figure shows the architecture of space air ground integrate vehicle network. Here, the space network means satellite network. 
the air network means aerial network or the network formed by UAV or drone, which the integrate space air ground networks, vehicles can get seamless services anywhere at any time. So our objective is to build a space air ground integrate communication network. The space and the air assist vehicle networking is responsible to, to enhance the coverage and the vehicle mobility. Here, the UAVs or the drones can form moving cells to keep pace with the movements of the vehicles to better support the high mobility by avoiding frequent handovers. Satellite is responsible for the location and the navigation and also cover the area without ground network access. Currently, there are some commercialized equipment for satellite and the vehicle communications. Also, different industry around the world have put a lot of effort to realize the air and the ground network integrations. The key issue related to the space air ground vehicle network is to efficient and effectively manage the resource from different networks in order to guarantee the QS of different vehicular applications. This figure shows the proposed hybrid and the hierarchical control architecture of the space air ground integrate vehicular network. Here, hybrid means satellite, UAV, and the ground networks. Hierarchical control means local access control and uh, central control. With this architecture, the local controller collects the individual vehicle service service requirements through the roadside units and the available ground network resource and pass the information to the central controller. The central controller makes the resource allocation to support individual vehicle service with a satisfied quality of service requirement based on the overall network resource from satellite, UAV, and the ground networks. Here, the controller is called software-defined network controllers. There are two inputs to the controller. One is from the network resource point of view. The other is from the user application point of view. So based on the available net heterogeneous network resources and also different vehicles application requirements, the SDN controller will make decision how much resource from which network will provide to which vehicle with guaranteed quality of service to its application. The decision is made based on the reinforcement learning. Here is a definition of reinforcement learning. For RL, an agent, that is network controller, learn the best policy through interaction with the unknown network system environment. At each system state, for example, UAV locations, the agent takes an action, observes the reward, such as pass loss or throughput, etc., from the environment to know 
how good this action is and adjust its future action based on the reward. Therefore, reinforcement learning learns the best policy means which action should be taken at each system state for resource management. We have developed reinforcement learning based HDN controller to efficiently manage HAG resources by interaction with environments, the decision map of the HDN controller can be obtained offline. In this way, the resource allocation decision can be done in real time, which is very suitable for vehicular scenarios. With the HDN controller, we can do adaptive access control, which means for a vehicle on the road with a service requirement, the HDN controller can decide which resource will be used to support its service requirement. In addition, the HDN controller can also decide the number of UAVs needed and each UAV's trajectory in order to maximize the UAV coverage ratios and also the network throughput. In the following, we are going to present the space air ground vehicle network simulation platform that we have developed in the past two years. Currently, there are many available softwares for space, air, and the ground network simulations. However, there is no simulation platform supporting the integration of the space air ground vehicle network functions. Since this platform is urgently needed to promote the research and the development of space air ground vehicle networks, we use a series of simulation software to implement the platform. In specific, VSIMs and HTK are used to generate the physical object, location, and the mobility of network nodes, including satellite, UAVs, and the vehicles. The network simulate three, or NS3, runs the call simulations, and the Python and the MATLAB implement an interface to further extend the capability of the platform. Here is an example of the simulation platform. We choose University of Waterloo campus as the simulation area. By selecting a test vehicle, the SDN controller can decide which resource, either from satellite or UAVs or the ground networks, and how much of the resource will be used to support the test vehicle based on the available resource, the number of vehicles, and also their service requirement. This slide shows in detail how the SDN controller makes the decision what resource is going to be used to provide services to the test vehicles. So at a different time, different locations, the test vehicle can be served either by ground networks, the UAVs, or the satellite. Next, we are going to show more simulation results by using the developed SAG vehicle network simulation platform. For the satellite simulation, 
we use the software called System Toolkit, which is a space-time system simulation tool. It includes different satellite and the sensor modules with data analysis and the visualization tools. With the STK, we can simulate the satellite orbits, ground locations with different communication parameters, such as the power antenna gain, pass, loss, etc. With the SDK, we can observe the access time in a given time and location, and the performance in terms of signal to noise ratio, bit error rate. With the SDK, you can implement those simulation parameters. Then you can observe the performance in terms of access time, the signal to noise ratio, and the bit error rate. By choosing the satellite orbits, such as low, medium Earth, geosynchronous orbits, and also the location of the ground stations, we can observe different access time with different performance. This figure shows that for Leo, for Leo, we have better communication performance in terms of BR. However, the coverage area is smaller due to that the Leo is closer to the A, to the Earth. On the other hand, for the male, the performance is not as good as the Leo, but the coverage area of the male is much larger. We also simulate three satellites, two Baidu median orbit satellites, one Baidu inclined orbit. This figure shows that by choosing the ground station to be in the Shanghai areas, we can observe each individual satellite access time. By combining all three satellites together, we can achieve more than 90% of the overall access time in the Shanghai areas. This figure shows during the rush, rush hour, additional resource is required. So the SDN controller can decide how many UAVs are needed and the each UAV follow what kind of trajectory such that those UAVs can form a moving cell to provide sufficient capacity to be integrated with ground network in order to support all the vehicle's service requirements. This figure shows the individual UAV trajectory. With this trajectory, with this trajectory, the form moving cell can provide the best performance in terms of the throughput. Finally, we present the simulation parameters that have been used for all the simulation results that we have shown before. In conclusion, space air ground integrated vehicle network provides solutions of full automation and support diverse vehicle services efficiently and cost effectively. The presented network architecture can achieve network agility and flexibility and a simplified network management. 
significant efforts are required for space air ground vehicular network platform implementation. In addition, more attention should be paid for vehicular services, which require different security goals, such as authentication, confidentiality, and uh, integrity. Thank you. I wish everyone enjoyed the conference. Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. Thanks to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. My name is Bi Xi Xi, a master student at group of professional teacher Ma and teacher Liu. We come from Harbin Institute of Technology in Weihai. Today I'm going to talk about on relay selection for relay assisted duty communications with adapted modulation and coding in cellular systems. We know the concept of Device-to-device -device communication is that to permit duty-capable user equipment perform direct data transmission between each other under the control of base station. And the advantages of developing device-to-device -device in the lunar system can be concluded at the following three aspects. Firstly, it can enjoy high data rates and low end-to-end -end delay. Secondly, it can reduce the core network data transmission load. Finally, it can improve spectral efficiency. But uh, recently, most works only took into account direct duty communications, which is easily influenced by the long distance and poor link quality between source and destination user equipment. So, relay assisted duty communications was proposed as a supplement to direct duty communications. But the crucial problem on developing relay assisted duty communications is to find out the optimal relay capable UE. So the existing relay selection scheme for relay assisted duty communications can be classified into two categories. One is the singular criteria, best selection strangers, and the other is cross layer criteria. Because the cross layer criteria best selection strangers jointly consider the criteria of physical layer and high layer, and it can issue both of QS requirements on physical layer and high layer. So it is more attractive during the relay selection strangers. Thus, in our previous work, we propose a, re a cross layer relay selection scheme that considers several criteria jointly, including end to end direct relay capable UE, remain battery time, and end to end trans transmission delay on relay assisted duty paths. But in that paper, we ignore a real problem as we assume that for a phase link, the channel state doesn't change. During the observation time, that is, we ignore the time varying channel states. Thus, the derivation process is unprecise, especially for end to end transmission delay. So, in this paper, we propose the same relay selection scheme. That is, we propose a cross layer relay selection scheme that considers several criteria jointly, including end to end direct relay capable UE, remain battery time, and end to end transmission delay on relay assisted delivery paths. But the difference from our previous work is that we will establish a quick mode model that combines adapted modulation and coding to evaluate the end-to-end -end transmission delay for DVD paths. But the derivation conclusions of end-to-end -end data rate relay capable UE remain battery time of our previous work can be used in this paper. So finally, we will evaluate the performance of the proposed scheme. Next, we will firstly introduce the system model. This is the system model we consider in our paper. It is a fully loaded single cell signal where duty pairs can only assess the system via 
channel reuse. There are n uplink CUES, C1, C2, CGSN. Totally n channels are available. A pair of DOES intending to perform DOD transmissions, DOES, DOED. DOES denote the destination, DOE. DOES denote the source DOE, DOED denote the destination DOE. Respectively, the DOD pair must reuse the uplink channel of a selected CUE to assess the system. M candidates are UES for the DOD pair and R1, R2, R1, R2, R1, RM denote the M candidate are UES. This is the problem formulation. We will establish a quin model that combines AMC to evaluate the end-to-end -end transmission delay. And secondly, we will jointly consider the end-to-end -end direct remain battery time of the relay capable UE and end-to-end -end transmission delay to choose the optimal RUE. If RUE can maximize the formula, then the RUE can be chosen as the optimal RUE. Before introducing the Queen model established to evaluate the end-to-end -end transmission delay, we will firstly introduce Queen service stats transition probability matrix, which will be used in the derivation process of the end-to-end -end transmission delay. We assume that there are L modulation and coding scan modes, and the LMCS modes are available for duty links. For each hop, S2RR link and RR2D link of the relay assisted DDD pass, we use CL to denote the number of data packets that can be transmitted at a time slot, and we call it Queen Service Stat, and let C denote the set of Queen Service Stat. Obviously, Queen Service Stat reflects the channel stats and, it, and is determined by the MCS, and it can be described by a finite stat Markov chain model. If we, if we use PLM to denote the Queen service state transition probability from CL to CM, and it can be obtained by, the, by this formula. Next, we will introduce the derivation process of the end-to-end -end transmission delay specifically. First, it is the Queen model. START represents the number of new arrival packets at source DOE or relay UE at time slot T. USTIJ URTI can represent the maximum number of transmitted packets on S2RR link or RR2D link at time slot T. CL represents a mode dependent number of transmitted packets. QSTIJ represents the number of queen packets at source DOE at the time slot T. QRTI can represent the number of queen packets at relay UE at the time slot T. Moreover, ST follows the person distribution and it can be denoted as the following formula, where lambda S times delta T indicates the average number of packets that arrive at the source DOE in a time slot T with an arrival rate lambda S. The mean of ST is lambda S times delta T and the size of each UE is assumed as K. Then, according to the Queen model, the Queen state transition relationship on S2RR link and R2D link can be obtained. Because of the time of this talk, we will only introduce the derivation process of S2RR link. To, anal to an analyze the system behavior, we construct an augmented FSMC with a state pair contain both queen and serving states, and the QSTIJ is only determined by its formula state, and the USTIJ is determined by its jacket state, which has been studied in previous slides. Size, the joint queen and the service state transition probability can be expressed as this, because it follows the fact that UST plus 1, IG only determined by USTIJ, then this country can be further simplified as D.
this. The probability is the element in the service state tran transmission probability matrix which has been obtained in before. Thus, the key work is to compute the probability to get the joint state transition probability. And uh, it can be obtained by this formula, which is obtained by the Queen state transi transition relationship. Thus, the joint queen and service state transition probability can be obtained. As the queen process can be modeled as a FSMC, the queen state will be steady after sufficiently long time, under which each queen state QSTIG corresponds to a station probability. Let omega SIG denote the stationary probability vector for the queen process on S to R link. It can be obtained by this. Then the average packet queen length can be denoted as this. Then the transmission delay for the packet queen on the S to R link can be expressed as the formula. In this formula, PSIG which represents the packet loss rate is unknown. So we can obtain it according to the formula. DSTIG denotes the dropped packet at the T time start and it can be expressed as the 15th formula. And its stationary distribution can be expressed as the 16th formula. So the packet loss rate can be expressed as the 17th formula. According to 18th formula, packet loss rate can be obtained. Then the transmission delay on S to R link can be obtained. Similarly, the transmission delay on R to D link can also be obtained. Then the total end to end transmission delay can be acquired. Then BS can select the optimal relay UE, which can provide a long operation time, higher end-to-end -end direct and short end-to-end -end transmission delay. The concrete optimal mathematical expression slide is shown in before. Next, it is the performance evaluation. The main purpose is to assess the end-to-end -end delay performance of the relay selection scheme when taking into account AMC. The signal is a single cell with its radi radius equal to 500 meter. BS is located at the center and all CUES are randomly distributed in the cell and only one d 2 pair is included. The source DOE randomly locates at least half of the cell radius away from BS and the destination DOE locates randomly on a circle center at the source DOE, or our UES are randomly distributed in the circle area whose center at source DOE. And the major parameter for the simulation can refer the two pictures. The finger shows the end-to-end -end transmission delay versus a varying packet arrival rate at source DOE on the different relay selection strangers and the channel balance. From the finger, we can see that with a phased channel balance wise and a relay selection stranger increasing the average packet arriving, arrival rate leads to an increase of the transmission delay. That is because increasing arrival rate at DOES means increasing packet dropping probability at source DOE. Then the transmission delay on each link will increase. Secondly, no matter what relay selection stranger is used, it's seen that the delay will dramatically increase while reducing channel balance wise. That is because a smaller balance wise corresponds to a low data rate on each link, which will decrease the service rate of the queen system established on each link. Second, thirdly, delay performance analyzed with MC displays a higher transmission delay than that without MC. That is because the latter weighs the performance at the maximum data rate, but it doesn't consider the change of channel. 
Thirdly, the end-to-end -end delay performance of the RAT delay and IUE remain battery based relaxation stranger is better than that of the RAT and IUE remain battery based relaxation stranger with the same packet arrival rate and channel banner wise. This is plain the importance of considering the end-to-end -end delay. Thus, we can know that the relay selection scheme we propose perform the good performance and considering the end-to-end -end transmission delay with MC is necessary. This finger shows the end-to-end -end transmission delay performance with varying distance between DOES and D. We can see that Firstly, end-to-end -end transmission delay will increase no matter what relay selection strategy is used with the increasing separation distance between source and destination DOEs. That is because increasing separ separation distance between source and destination DOEs will enlarge the path loss and result in a decreased service rate as the delay will increase. Secondly, the strangers with MC display higher transmission delay than that without MC, but it ignores the change of the channel. Thirdly, for the relay analysis with MC, the red and IUE remain battery based stranger still has the worst delay performance, and the red based stranger has the best delay performance under certain distance condition, but the red delay and IUE remain battery based stranger will be with the best delay performance when distance is larger than a three short. Thus, we can know that the relay selection scheme we proposed especially adapting the large distance of the DOE. This finger shows the delay performance with varying distance between source and the destination DOEs on the different channel bandwidth with MC. It de demonstrates the influence of bandwidth and the influence of rate delay and IOE remain time past strangers when the distance between DOEs is large. So summing up, in this paper, we propose a relay selection scheme on end-to-end -end direct end-to-end -end transmission delay and the remain battery time of the relay compare UE. We also establish a quick model combine MC to analyze the end-to-end -end transmission delay. We finally we evaluate the performance of the proposed scheme. Above are the whole idea of the paper. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Zhao Pu. It's my great honor to present our preliminary study on the overview of the research on SDN enabled by machine learning. The talk includes the following parts, background, overview of SDN, overview of machine learning, discussing our applying machine learning to SDN, and finally conclusions. The Internet has led to the creation of a digital society where almost everything is connected and accessible from anywhere. The network usually involves different devices, run different protocols, and supports different applications. The infrastructure, devices, and resources in networking are becoming more complex and heterogeneous. Heterogeneous network infrastructure enhances the complexity of the network and brings many challenges in effectively organizing, managing, and optimizing network resources. Fortunately, software defined network based on the concept of progra programmable network and logically and logically centralized management proposed a simplified solution for the complex task, such as traffic engineering, network optimization, orchestration, and so on. However, the key to the success of SDN is whether it can effectively solve the problems 
that cannot be well solved in the traditional networking architectures, as, such as scalability, network awareness, on-demand quality assurance, intelligent traffic scheduling, and so on. Not worthily, machine learning provides great potential for SDN innovation. Meanwhile, SDN creates conditions for the smooth deployment of machine learning in the network because of the unique advantages of SDN, such as programmability, global view, centralized control, and so on. Firstly, a mass of data is akin to implement a data-driven machine learning algorithm. The SDN controller maintains a global network view as well as can monitor and collect all kinds of network data, which can provide a lot of real-time and historical data for machine learning algorithm. Secondly, the optimized solution, such as the configuration and resource allocation, can be easily deployed in the network due to the programmability of SDN. Next, I will give a brief overview of SDN. Software Defined Network refers to a network architecture where the forwarding state in the data plan is managed by a remote control plan decoupled from the former. The typical SDN architecture is shown in the figure. SDN is divided into data plan control plan and application plan from bottom to top. The data plan contains a series of forwarding devices interconnected through wireless channels or wired cables. They are responsible for data processing, forwarding, and status collection based on flow tables. The data plan communicates communicate with the control plan by source-bound interface. The source-bound interface defines the communication protocol between the forwarding elements and the controllers, such as open flow protocol. The protocols formalize the way that the controllers and the forwarding elements interact. The control plan includes a series of logically centralized controllers regarded as the brain of the network. The controller is mainly responsible for the arrangement of data plan resources maintenance of network topology, status information, and so on. The SDN controller can offer the APS to application developers. The APS presents a, a northbound interface, a common interface for developing applications. The application plan includes a variety of business and applications such as routing, firewalls, load balancer, monitoring, and so on. The application leverage the function offered by the northbound interface to implement network control and operation logic. Many standardization organizations have enjoyed in the formulation of SDN standards. The Open Networking Foundation is the foremost organization specializing in SDN interface standards. A number of companies have enjoyed in the Open Networking Foundation. The Open Flow Protocol formulated by this organization has become the mainstream standard of SDN interface. With the development of application of fifth generation communication technology, SDN has become an important enabling technology for fifth generation. Thus, SDN has broad prospects for develop development and great research value. Next, I will give a brief overview of machine learning. The general definition of machine learning is that intelligent machines learn from experience, from available data in the environment, and use learned method to improve overall performance. In this case, learning method can be divided into four groups. A super, supervised, unsupervised, a semi-supervised, and a reinforcement learning. Supervised learning method requires predefined knowledge. 
for example, a training data set consisting of input-output pairs in which the, the, the system learns learn a function that maps a given input to an appropriate output. The unsupervised learning method is carried out without predefined knowledge, only having unmarked data. Therefore, the system mainly focuses on the finding specific uh, parameters in the input. In semi-supervised learning, the system learns from labeled and uh, unlabeled data. Semi-supervised learning is superior to unsupervised learning because it contains some small labeled data. In reinforcement learning, the system is based on a set of the informant in the environment to learn. For example, the system is rewarded or punished according to whether it can work well. Each interaction with the environment re returns information, and the system will make full use of this information to learn and update its knowledge. Overall, supervised learning algorithm is a common algorithm in intrusion detection. Because the intrusion detection is often regarded as a classification task in SDN, machine learning based, in, based intrusion detection has been studied extensively, such as coarse grained intrusion detection, fine grained intrusion detection, and DDoS attack detection. QoS prediction is usually considered as a regression task, while QoE prediction is considered as a classification task. Therefore, supervised learning technique can be used for QoS or QoE prediction. However, due to the cost and the time consuming of obtaining subjective QoE values, it is difficult to collect a large level of training data set. A semi-supervised learning algorithm only may need to mark a small part of the data, so they are also effective for QoE prediction. Compared with supervised learning algorithm, the informant has obvious advantages. On the one hand, the reinforcement algorithm, the reinforcement learning, does not need a labeled training data set. On the other hand, optimization objectives such as energy efficiency, throughput, and latency can be flexibly adjusted through different incentive functions. Then I will talk about a few examples in the section. A pair of circular et al. present a novel approach for P4 switch verification. P4RL, a system that uses a reinforcement learning guarded file testing to execute the ver verification of P4 switches automatically at the wrong time. They also provide a language, P4Q, for expression the expected P4 switch behavior conveniently and track the actual runtime behavior of the P4 switch against such behavior. The figure illustrates an overview of the P4 RIO system. First, the user specifies the behavioral property of the network to be verified. Together with, together with the configuration of the control plan, it is, it is the input for the world system, providing the basis for the verification. The information learning agent defines the mutation actions to be applied for each individual packet to be generated. Agent adjusts its future action selection using the information returned by the reward system about the processing of packets done by the P4 switch. The experiments on existing P4 applications so that inf the informant learning guard the fuzzing process and make it more focused. Next, 
assailed at a proposed framework called Atlantic for Joint Abnormal Traffic Detection, Classification and Mitigation in SDN. The Atlantic Framework implements anomaly detection and classification in two phases, light phases and heavyweight phases. In the light in the lightweight phases, low computation cost method, such as information theory, are executed more frequently to quickly support potentially malicious flaws. In the heavyweight stage, by using an SVM algorithm to leverage historic knowledge about past anomalies, the flaws are analyzed and classified, classified according to their abnormal behavior. Atlantic then takes appropriate mitigation measures to automatically handle malicious traffic, and human administrator manually analyze unknown traffic. Final conclusions. Uh, generally speaking, Machine learning has been proved to be a very useful tool in, in the SDN. More and more machine learning technologies are used to solve a wide range of network problems. The advantages of machine learning technology in classification, prediction, and further extraction can better solve the security protection, resource allocation, routing, load balancing, and other issues in SDN. In addition, compared with traditional machine learning, deep learning can provide a better result. However, it also brings new challenges to SDN. Machine learning algorithm and corresponding training data are vulnerable to a variety of security threats. Until now, researchers from academia and industry have found out many security threats against a variety of learning algorithms. More attention should be paid to the robust, robustness of machine learning in confrontational environment. Now it's over. Thank you for attention. Hello everyone, today I would like to share with you my new research paper, Decentralized Resource Sharing Platform for Mobile Edge Computing. The authors are Hong Bo Zhang, Si Zheng Fan, and Wei Cai. First, let me give you some brief introduction. With the development of the Industrial Internet of Things, the demand on computing power is increasing. However, the computing power of IIoT devices are often very low. To solve this problem, we introduce mobile edge computing. Mobile edge computing provides computing services with lower latency by deploying computing power on the edge rather than on the cloud server. In addition, Due to the dense geographical distribution and high mobility of the edge, serve edge devices, users can upload their computing tasks to the edge anytime and anywhere. Before introducing our system, we start by basically introducing our previous system, Edge Toe. In our previous work, we proposed Edge Toe a blockchain-based toll collection system for edge resources sharing. Before the previous system come up, users need to register different companies' account to use different companies' edge nodes resources, which is quite inconvenient for users. Hence, 
In our previous work, we introduced proxy and let proxy to handle payment delivery with users and edge nodes. However, the public blockchain has a problem of low performance and high cost. Hence, we introduced payment channel to solve the problem. The payment channel is a technique that allows two stakeholders to trade for multiple frequent transactions with a shorter time and lower cost. Besides, the payment channel is implemented in a smart contract. Instead of building a payment channel directly between users and edge, we let proxy to build up payment channels with users and edge nodes respectively. In this way, users, not, users only need to register one public blockchain address and pay the bills to the proxy through the payment channel. The proxy then sends the tokens to the selected edge nodes through the payment channel. By using payment channel, edge nodes provides a transparent, quick, and cost-efficient solution to encourage the participation of edge service provider. However, it is quite controversial to introduce a centralized proxy in our system, which not only violates the decentralization spirit of blockchain, but also might cause a pollution problem if proxy is unsupervised. To solve the mentioned issue, we construct a consortium blockchain to record the service matching results on the consortium blockchain. Then, let me give you a system overview to introduce our system. As you can see from the figure, there are four types of system users in our system. They are user, edge, proxy, and company. In our scenario, they are, the users are IIoT devices, edge are edge nodes, and company are the edge service providers. Each company controls various edge nodes. However, one edge node can only belong to one company. And from the figure, you can also find that there are two types of blockchain, we are, which are public blockchain and consortium blockchain. And every system user has a sp specific address on the public and consortium blockchain. The figure shows the software architecture of our system. The devices can use the edge node to, for edge computing service. Initially, the edges and IIoT devices register their blockchain address in the proxy, which will be used in the payment channel later. The public blockchain provides the payment channel smart contract and the consortium blockchain provides the service matching smart contract. Other than the smart contract, there are also two parts in the consortium blockchain, which are group member management and consensus algorithm. The sessions in consortium blockchain will introduce will be given more details in the following slides. First, we will talk about the group member management. In the consortium blockchain, there are two types of nodes, which are sealer nodes and observer nodes. Both of them can send transactions. However, only sealer nodes can join the consensus process. In our system, we choose proxy and company as sealer nodes. And we also choose the IIoT device and edge nodes as our observer nodes. As for the new register node in consortium blockchain, there also exist different rules. For new observer nodes, they can be added directly after the registration, 
since they do not join the consensus process. However, the registration of Selenol is stricter. It requires agreement from more than two-thirds of the current Selenols. Second, we will introduce the consensus algorithm. Compared with other consensus algorithms, we choose practical Byzantine fault tolerance consensus algorithm. Since it has the quality of low latency, high efficiency, and high scalability. Silenos can receive and check the valid validity of received transactions. It can satisfy the demand of high-frequency transactions during calling the service matching smart contract. Besides, it can also resist attack from less than one-third of malicious nodes. Last, we will introduce the service matching part. Previously, it was done by proxy, which might lead to the centralized proxy problem and collusion problem as we mentioned above. Hence, we introduced smart contract to solve the problem. The smart contract has a specific address in the consortium blockchain. As you can see from the, uh, from the figure, which is a sequence diagram of the procedure. Each nodes can record their location in the smart contract and IIoT devices can send their location to find for the recommended edge node. Currently, we use 3D algorithm to recommend the nearest node, and through smart contract, the service matching can be done automatically and the result is auditable. Since the service matching will be recorded on the consortium blockchain, hence the result is supervised and can prevent collusion. Compared with public blockchain, consortium blockchain has a better performance and does not need to pay for extra costs, such as gas fee. As you can see from the figure, this is a test bed implementation of our system. We use the workstation to work as an edge computing server. We equip the edge computing server with three wireless access points to work as three edge nodes. The IIoT devices can submit their computational tasks to edge nodes through the wireless network. Then, Edge nodes run the task and return the results to back to the IIoT devices. To implement the prototype, we select various platforms and technologies. For the consortium blockchain platform, we choose Fisco, which is an open source consortium blockchain platform. For the programming language, we use Solidity to write the service matching smart contract. As for the client-side website, we choose the information port provided by Fisco. With the information port, all system users can check the information of transactions and the smart contract on the consortium blockchain. As for the interaction with consortium blockchain, we use the Python software development kit provided by Fisco. This is a figure, uh, this is a demonstration of our information port. As you can see, all system users can get the information of the consortium blockchain from the information port. The information port shows the transactions, blocks, node status. Besides, it also shows the transaction amount in the last 15 days. At last, I will give a brief conclusion. 
to conclude our work. In our previous work, we provide a low latency and cost efficient solution for a transparent and auditable toll collection system by leveraging the payment channel technique. In this work, we demonstrate a decentralized toll collection system which solved the, solve the centralized proxy problem in our previous work. By adding the consortium blockchain, we introduce a low-cost solution to solve out the centralized proxy problem. The decisions used to make by the centralized proxy can be implemented in the smart contract. And the smart contract will be deployed on the consortium blockchain. In this way, the results will be supervised by edge computing companies and proxy. As for our future works, they are mostly they are mainly two parts. One is a more efficient and rational service matching model. Besides, the proxy will consider the types of both edge node and tasks in this model. In particular, the task allocation process will focus on high efficiency and low cost. In order to attract IoT devices and edge service provider, a new dynamic pricing strategy will also be considered, which not only focus on the incentive mechanism, but also aims to improve the utility of edge nodes. Thank you very much for hearing our presentation. And the following is the reference. Hello everyone, it's a great honor to be here with you. I want to introduce Morning Run Trajectories for Network Optimization from Operating Vickers. I'm one of the authors of the paper, Zhang Renzhou. Here I'm going to say is the content of the four process, including background, the feature extraction method, the performance evaluation and conclusion. First, let's talk about the research background. User's behavior in the network is complex and changeable. Because it's accessing users are no longer limited to human purpose devices. But also include animals with sensors and communication devices as well as machine with autonomous mobile functions. A large number of business requests are initiated in hot air collectively. Meanwhile, the business type of voice intensive is changing to that of data intensive and connection intensive.
Some of research focus on human behavior analysis based on learned trajectory data. To understand the people's learn demand for transportation, driving preference, extracting mobility behavioral patterns. This picture shows the hypermap of a random selected trajectories of the vehicle, which mainly takes the activities around the central part of the Shenzhen. Different densities are presented by different colors. In this paper, the RAN GPS data is published from Shenzhen Transportation Bureau. In the following three methods will be used to extract the features of the trajectory, which are evaluation of self-similarity with host exponent, host spurs with density based clustering and long tail with cumulative distribution function. First, introduce the first method, evaluation of self-similarity with host exponent. A system with host statistics characteristics reflects the result of a long series of interrelated events. The aggregated variance and the rescaled range analysis method are for burn implementations of host exponent algorithm. However, the candidate run GPS data are huge. So the algorithm proposed by William Davison's named BD procedure in Water follows is to quantify the self similarity of waypoints, which is far faster than the conventional algorithm. If you are interested in algorithm, the algorithm processor described in the paper. The second method, evaluation of host spurs with density based clustering. From a maker perspective, human always activates in a constant area, which can be called hot spurs. However, the so urban operating vehicles have public and specific attributes. It's necessary to close the trajectory of operating vehicles to explore either they are hot spots. We choose density based spatial clustering of a publication with noise as the Glue string method.
last evaluation of long test with cumulative distribution function. The head and tail are two statistics types. Where well, the head is a protruding part in the middle of normal cave. And the tail is a relatively flat part on both sides. From the perspective of human mobility, most of the daily trip will focus on the head, which can be called popular. Where well, the demand distributed in the long tail is personalized, scarlet, and small. The generated safety is defined as the time several of travel distance from vehicle with the most hot spots at the center. This picture is the framework of data mining. Mangled serves as the only database and serves as the data storage. Use back to mine data features. Next is the simulation result of the experiment. Because there are three evaluation methods mentioned above, we will discuss their simulation results separately. It can be seen that the vehicle with the blue license plate has a low value of Hurst, while the yellow vehicle has a later HEG one. From the definition of the Hurst parameter, the blue license plate that stands for the caps is rendered roaming close the city. And the yellow license plate that stands for the trunks has a self similarity pulsing of moving. Pictures show the locations in one day for a specific type of the vehicle. The graph is color based on the closed string results. The picture on the left represents the moving tracks of caps, and the picture on the right represents the moving tracks of trains. Therefore, it is seen that the caps always normal in several center hotspots while the trick is always moving by a specific path. The x-axis of the picture represents the distance from the center and the y-axis represents the distribution probability of the distance. Vega shows the caps in the city always take a short journey, while the distance that the tracks move is basically steady. We can see that the red line is steeper than the back line which shows that the caper 
move around the hot spots. Through the above simulation results, we can draw some conclusions. Many results show the caps which represent to save the daily trip of humor in the city always take a short travel and activate in several hot spots, but roaming randomly. However, the tricks which represent to save the girls are showing the opposite characteristics to caps. Therefore, the weaker types are the key feature of consideration to optimize algorithms for radial resource management in HDM. Thank you for watching this video. Hello everyone, I'm Cong Ying Yu from College of Big Data and Internet. Shenzhen Technology University. It's my great honor to speak here and I'm very glad to share my topic with you. Then, today I'd like to talk about something about an intelligent elevator system based on low-power wireless networks. I will talk about the topic from the following four aspects. The first part is the research background. The trend of IoT and wireless networks techniques has resulted in a promising paradigm and a more rational and intelligent elevator control system could be considered. It is necessary to deploy the multi-car elevator system with an intelligent scheduling to improve the transportation efficiency of large buildings with hyper-dense people. However, due to the instantaneous uh, increase of traffic road and the limitation of elevator car capacity, the elevator system is still faced with serious traffic congestion bottom net in peak hours. A lot of previous works are devoted to improve tra uh, traffic congestion capacity to increase time efficiency. Some people adopt an optimization of elevator scheduling that focuses on stand-alone central controller for peak hours while lacking the solution of sensing the external environment of elevator. Besides, multi-functional uh, sensors were equipped at the floors for mainly detecting the passenger inside and outside the elevator car. However, these approaches confront the limitations of destination perception in advance, therefore proactively computing on the fine-grained traffic road information by the elevator system from each flower was proposed. This smart elevator system is to integrate traffic road by dynamically managing user interface and providing intelligent suggestions to guide passengers' ride to other agents' floors for time saving and physical health consideration. However, there is a steady stream for, of persons coming to wait the elevator that may increase the uncertainty of uh, sensing the traffic road, since the user interface is still around elevator car. 
Consequently, an improved elevator system is proposed with remote calling and crowd scheduling based on low-power wireless networks. This work adopts remote call by the general portable equipment, which not only reduces the manager, uh, man management cost, but also solves the problem of inaccurate identification of the number of incoming persons. The elevator dispatching center in the crowd receives the call data of users and the running state of the elevator at the same time and judges the full road through multiple factors. The design reduces the number of ineffective elevator door opening and closing while improving the running efficiency of the elevator. The user call data and ele uh, elevator data are presented on the web through the visual interface, which can give the maintenance personnel a more comprehensive and intuitive elevator operation health state, making the elevator maintenance become more active rather than passive maintenance after failure or accident. Uforos is the system model. The novel elevator system is um, based on the, um, the loyal concept of IoT, including the perceptual recognition layer, network construction layer, crowd computing layer, and application layer, which stands for smart elevators, the floor identification and related information transmission, the the elevator scheduling center and the user interface, respectively. In the, uh, in the royal concept of IoT, the perceptual recognition layer is a link between the physical world and the information world, so the smart elevators can report the running status and receive the uh, instructions via uh, wireless networks from the crowd. The network construction layer is a pipeline to exchange the information between the physical elevator and the remote control system. Meanwhile, with the support of high-performance computing and mass storage technology, the crowd computing layer organizes large-scale data efficiently and reliably, and provides intelligent scheduling for elevator applications. The application layer is an integrated server provider and instructions collector. Thus, the unified uh, interface of human-computer interaction is adopted, which is a cross-platform architecture ranging from the web browser to the mobile mini-program. The third part is design of an uh, intelligent elevator system. As is, no, as is shown in the picture, users utilize the portable devices to detect the corresponding wireless identification signals of their uh, particular flaws and send the messages including uh, the present flaw information, call, regression, uh, call request, and target fraud information uh, to the elevator disp uh, remote dispatching system. Then the system obtains the elevator stop fraud information through the role uh, evaluation and similarity matching method. Um, in the meanwhile, the stop fraud instruction is sent to the elevator local control system. The local control si system controls the, uh, the elevator to the corresponding fraud according to the instructions. For the application layer, as it is shown in the picture, users utilize a WeChat applet to realize the remote call to the elevator. After the WeChat applet, via Bluetooth, obtains the user flow information and get connected with the server. The user could uh, select the target fraud on it. Then the WeChat applet sends the obtained data, namely the uh, users' uh, pre present and target flaw information to the cloud platform, where the users request data and the running state of the elevator are monitoring in the real time. For the perceptual recognition layer, um, the serial port instruction from the microchip unit is used to control the MB module to receive data. 
the operation process of the elevator is uh, si simulated on the single chip microcomputer and the corresponding data is displayed on the uh, uh, OLED screen. Meanwhile, the real-time operation data of the elevator is uploaded and uh, by the NB module to the cloud platform, where the lasted, uh, where the lasted core data is downloaded. For the network construction layer, IBCOM is a low-power Bluetooth technology which transmits signals from IBCOM device as well as uh, receives and feeds signals from user device. There are four main data of IBCOM, UUID, major, minor, or um, ma measured uh, power. UUID is the ob uh, abbreviation of Universal Unique Identifier which can create a new identifier for the new service. If the service provider can match the available service with UUID, it will return a response. MBIoT is a new technology in the field of IoT, which supports uh, cellular data connection of low-power devices in wide area network also known as low-power wide area network. Compared with uh, world or cellular data transmission, MBIoT has the advantages of low power consumption and easy installation, installation which is more uh, suitable for real-time monitoring of elevators. Compared with 4G, it can satisfy a large number of con uh, connections and have low power consumption. When the IBCOM device transmits signals, the client software uh, confirms the UUID of the IBCOM device at first. After the confirmation, the flaw is uh, identified by the major value in the signals, and the uh, current flaw is indirectly judged by the RSSI value and then sent to the cloud server through the WebSocket API. MBIoT is responsible for data communication between STM32, MCU, and uh, cloud servers. For the cloud computing layer, the cloud uh, platform has three main functions, real-time uh, elevator monitoring, real elevator request and scheduling optimization. First, the cloud platform receives the information about the elevator location, operation status and the status of, other, uh, of the other sensors through UDP protocol and stores them in the database. The web interface reads the data in the database and uh, presents the co uh, the comprehend corresponding data of the elevator in a visual form. Second, uh, the cloud platform obtains the user call data, including the user present and target flow, through WebSocket uh, protocol. Um, receives the elevator data through UDP protocol and stores the user data and the uh, elevator data into the database. The user call da uh, database obtains the fields user flow target flow process in elevator. Then the flowing full load algorithm is used to judge whether the elevator is full. This algorithm can solve the problem of invalidly stop of elevator flow when the elevator is full but not exceeding the pre. Uh, predetermined threshold. It will not stop the elevator floor by floor but not able to carry more pe people, resulting in the waste of power and time. In the skin of the elevator calling by various users, it is necessary for the central control to coordinate the concurrent user calls in order uh, in order to provide more service. Therefore, a fuzzy clustering based method is adopted to achieve it. Clustering is a classification of similar 
object into different groups or more precisely, the partitioning of a data set into clusters so that the data in each subset share some common trait, often proximated according to some uh, defined distance measures. The fuzzy clustering uh, algorithm is used to calculate the scheduling scheme, and finally the dispatching result and full load signals are sent to the elevator. Then it is turned to system evaluation. At present, the elevator practical is not opened to the public, so the operation process of the elevator is simulated on the single chip microcomputer. STM32 is adopted on not only because of its high performance and low power consumption, but also because of its fast running speed, rich interface, and rich communication modules. Now let me describe the specific op operation process. Users select the target fraud by utilizing the WeChat applet in the portable device, mobile phones for instance. Then the background process of the applet scans the Bluetooth uh, broadcast signal at the elevator waiting area. The users for the location are identified by the char characteristic value and RSSI uh, signal strength, and the user's present and target flow information is sent to the elevator remote dispatching uh, system. Then the call elevator data is stored in the database. The server sends the new user request including the target flow and the user's flow data to the a uh, uh, simulated elevator control terminal STM32 and sends the elevator floor and the running states of the elevator to the server. The Grafana monitoring um, platform displays the running status of the elevator and the user's call request in the real time. Conclusion through the low power wireless networks, including the NB-IoT and Bluetooth iBecome technology, an intelligent elevator system is proposed with remote calling and crowd scheduling. The remote elevator calling is presented for the general portable equipment, which not only reduces the management cost, but also solves the problem of inaccurate identification of the number of incoming persons. The elevator dispatching center in the crowd receives the call data of users and the running state of the elevator at the same time, and judges the full road through um, multi-factors. The design reduces the number of ineffective elevator door opening and closing, while improving the running efficiency of the elevator. The user call data and elevator data are presented on the web through the visual interface. This can give the maintenance personnel a more comprehensive and intuitive elevator operation health state, making the elevator maintenance become more active rather than passive maintenance after failure or accident. The elevator entity that installed the proposed system will be tested for future work. That's all. Thank you for your listening. Hello everyone, I'm here on behalf of Wang Jiye to do this sharing. The title of our paper is Research on Time-Sensitive BBU Shaper for Supporting the Transmission of Smart Grid. Our presentation is divided into four parts, background, problem description, possible solution, and our evaluation. With the development of 5G-based power IoT, many kinds of power services have benefited from the low latency and high reliability of 5G networks. The research on ultra-reliable re low-latency communication is continuing to follow up in the field of smart grids. 
Considering the demands of stable transmission in plenty of power IoT scenarios, the time-sensitive networking, which is developed from IEEE AVB, has been discussed to provide a deterministic transmission insurance for smart grid. TSN is a set of standards under development by the IEEE 802.1 Working Group. It defines mechanisms for the time-sensitive transmission of data over deterministic Ethernet networks. Although the TSN technologies are relatively mature, there are still many problems to be solved before TSN can be perfectly converged with 5G system. TSN can realize the network's deterministic delay based on time synchronization and traffic scheduling technology, ensure the reliability of the network through reliable transmission technology, and achieve interoperability between different networks through resources management technology. However, time awareness ship will cause packet loss due to incorrect gate control status. It highly depends on accurate time synchronization between network nodes. The introduction of the frame preemption, the introduction of the frame preemption mechanism, increases the waiting time of low priority data. It is necessary to balance the average delay and the mechanism delay of the network. Due to the uncertainty of wireless channel, i.e. The air interface, determinism at the mobile edge is hard to reach, especially the reliability and stability on uplink. In addition, the accuracy of absolute time synchronization is also restricted by the asymmetry of wireless channel. It creates problems such as timestamp deviation of the data collection disrupting the determin determinism of other service flows and reducing the overall network resources utilization. Since the smart grid services that use the most wireless connections are the power big data services, which includes various types of power data collection and real-time monitoring, it is most necessary to consider the impact of time synchronization errors on those services. What's more, in the context of the continuous improvement of the electricity market, system power balance can be achieved through demand side management. To achieve high effect source grade load storage, coordinated and optimized scheduling is essential which highly depends on accurate time synchronization. The 5G release 16 is frozen now. I believe some of you have noticed that the time-sensitive networking has been integrated into 5G system. This picture is from TS22.104. 5G system uses TSN translators at core network and user equipment which will provide the ability of deterministic communication in 5G. There is also some other work about how to realize the convergence. The basis for TSN to work properly is accurate absolute time synchronization. Now the 5G system uses GPTP protocol to achieve sub-microsecond to nanosecond level accuracy. And for air interface, the method named TAP is believed to provide sub-millisecond to microsecond level synchronization accuracy. In our opinion, Smart Grid will adopt 5G and TSN converged network as a wireless business solution for power IoT in the future. Based on the integration of 5G and TSN in the aspect of core network, Bayer network and network time synchronization, the power IoT can provide the following features for the big data terminals, service admission, charging, 
grant priority and preemption authorizations. Real-time deterministic resources allocation based on network status awareness. Absolute time synchronization based on GPTP. TSN data adapter and TSN configuration adapter for other parts of the smart grid. Most applications or devices of power big data are of large amount. Their transmission data is periodic and sensitive to transmission delay, and the size of data transmitted each time is relatively small. What's more, their priority in transmission should be relatively higher. In short, 5G, together with TSN, is able to provide exactly what power big data in smart grid requires. We have been studying absolute time synchronization. So the next problem we consider is, how will the synchronization accuracy affect the transportation? Let's begin with what's not clear in the release 16 about interpreting TSN. No consideration of the coexistence issues about TSN and non-TSN. App linking monitoring application guarantee. Due to the delay uncertainty of wireless link or error of time synchronization, which is more common. Also, there are more issues that need to be clarified, including TSN service, authentication, etc. Here we only focus on the first two issues. The TSN and non-TSN coexistence make it necessary to consider the problem of preemption. Especially in uplink, we need traffic shaping to stabilize the time for upstream data to enter the 5G system as much as possible. On the right side is a typical scenario in TSN-enabled small grid. Using network slides to reserve specific resources for TSN application is a common idea. Our goal is to satisfy the transportation requirement and to evaluate the effect from delay uncertainty and timing error. In this paper, we propose a solution by using a traffic shaper right at the mobile edge in response to the requirements of the Power Big Data service for the uplink transmission delay. We choose to shape the upstream at the BBU as it is the entrance of the terminal to access the network. The shaper aims to achieve the abilities of stabilizing the transmission delay of the stream and reduce the delay of the timed out stream. Meanwhile, control the reasonable utilization of the network. First, the shipper should be aware of all the legal TSN streams that passing the base station is connected to. This requires to interact with TSN AF. Then, we shall use priority to control all the TSN streams as it is a standard way in TSN stream control. The mechanism of stabilizing transmission delay First, we set up a threshold for each uplink stream according to their ideal arrival time to make the upstream tra traffic relatively stable. As shown in the figure on the right side, for packages arrives within the threshold, the shaper set up a, a queue and waits for the threshold. When forwards the data, the shipper checks whether there are multiple queues that need to prompt resources at the current moment, reducing worse delay. For packages arrives over time, the shipper temporarily elevates the priority of the stream. Then the shipper forwards the streams according to their priorities. By increasing the priority of the timeout system, we can reduce this waiting delay in other parts of the network. At the same time, although the stream has missed its reserved TSN resources, there is still hope to avoid resources occupancy for subsequent services by occupying resources outside the TSN slice. 
for the floor with lower priority, which has been interrupted. The shipper needs to recalculate the priority according to how much the flow is delayed. The priority evaluator needs to be carefully designed as unreasonable escalation can lead to large scale of preemption, which requires overhead and risks over all delay. Design of BBU shaper. The priority elevator is the core function of the BBU shaper as it directly affects the gate control list. The shipper also need to form the stream list from TSM configuration and establish the corresponding queue. Specifically, some parameters and corresponding functions are essential, including resources allocation rate of current slice in converged network, slot length, minimum preemptive frame length, stream information, etc. We evaluate the design of the BBU shaper with different kind of priority elevators, including linear elevator, fixed elevator, delay-based elevator. Assume a base station is connected to N devices terminals. Each terminal is allocated exclusive resources within a slice of 100 microseconds. All the terminals have a random synchronization error for some reason. Therefore, they will transmit data at the wrong time and coupled with the unstable delay of the channel. The stream will exceed the expected situation. The slice takes 10% of time domain with full bandwidth BW equal 100 GBPs. The terminals has synchronization error within four times of their threshold with random initial priority from zero to prime max equal 127. Their thresholds are set to t equal 50 microseconds, and their data rates are all within 100 Mbps. The figure on the right side shows the working status and evaluation results. For example, the time synchronization error results in preemption for 4.31 MB data transmitted when using linear elevator and the load is 75%. The worst delay reaches to about 1 milliseconds, which is 20 times longer than the expected transmission delay. We can see that the shipper can reduce the total preemption rate under the same load compared to the case without the elevator. To conclude, the absolute time synchronization error of these devices can lead to increases in preemption, average transmission delay, and worse transmission delay. The mechanism AAOE we proposed is able to stabilize the transmission delay and reduce worse delay. But there are still some problems remain to be solved, such as efficient design of priority if elevate as the BBU shipper has to predict the consequences of promoting priority. Based on our discussion, we believe that the BBU shipper will have a role in supporting the transmission of smart grid in the future.
using water monitoring to analyze the livability of white ship outline abstract introduction the proposed scheme experimental research conclusions abstract the research develops an inter intelligence agriculture system to detect the water quality of a culture pond. Additionally, using fossil luxury to evaluate water quality that influence the agriculture ability. Each species requires a different environment of water quality. Therefore, the study utilizes an intelligent agriculture system to detect the water quality of white ponds. After using fossil logic to analyze water quality, the result is delivered as equal, divided into five levels of signal sections. The purpose of the research is to understand where the, the agricultural environment is suitable for white shrimps by detecting the water quality. Constantly, through studying the livability to understand the importance of water quality. From the experimental result, the water quality of target agriculture pounds are all, all within the livability range of white shrimp. The result has shown a livability rate of 33%, which is considered high livability in marine white ship farming. Hence, it is concluded that water quality has a high correlation with livability. Moreover, the study demonstrates that water monitoring and water quality analysts are beneficial to monitor the agricultural environment which can further increase the livability of white ship and boost income. Introduction Today, the level of reliance of fishery products has been increasing in many countries. However, with the greater demand from human beings overfishing becomes a major issue that causes the scarcity of marine species among which marine fishes accounts for 1.4 percent gross domestic product in India. The global demand for
prawns becomes extremely large despite the overfishing issue that cause decreasing catches. Agriculture can fulfill the scarcity of fish and pounds. pounds. Yet, outdoor agriculture has to overcome the environmental factors to increase the yield. Therefore, intelligent agriculture system can monitor diverse environmental factors in culture pounds and send alarms timely to help operator control the pound conditions. This research use water monitoring to analyze the growth rate of white ship. It decays the water quality and use fossil larger to analyze the data. The result of fossil logic is divided into five signals. The optimal quality of water is indicated as phi. Any worst quality of water is one. When the system detects the signal one, it will notify the operator to conduct relevant procedures to increase the water quality. At the end of this study, we add all of the signal numbers and average the result to compare the of all overall growth rate. The rest enables us to conclude whether the water quality is proportional to the growth rate. The proposed scheme. This schematic diagram is shown in figure 1. The intelligent monitor system will deliver the agriculture data to the server, which will further define the data into five different scanners according to the environmental data of white ship and calculate the overall condition. When the scanner is too low, the system will notify the operator to adjust the environment. Which confirms the math suggests in this study can increase the overall growth rate effectively. Figure 1 The scan diagram of the system. Water monitoring analyze. The study used fossil larger to analyze the quality of water, which is divided into five levels of scanners. The sensor of the water quality monitor detects sea salt, oxygen content, power or hydrogen, and oxidation reduction potential. Set each range of water quality. 
that is suitable for fashion us wicked and fearless spirit the range into five cent sectors the optimal quality of water means the best living environments for white sheep while the worst quality of water means the poorest environments for white sheep the definitions of the scanners are p as five points g as four points and as three points b as two points and mb as one point experimental result the research offers an intelligence agriculture system that monitors sea salt oxygen contents power of hydrogen and oxidation reduction potential in the water quality of agriculture the oxidation reduction potential plays a vital role in the system therefore the research aims to normalize the values of oxidation reduction potential and power of hydrogen which is shown in figure 2 and figure 3 figure 2 the normalization of the power of hydrogen Picture 3 The normalization of oxidation reduction potential Conclusion The research builds a water monitoring system to analyze the growth rate of the fashion to improve the livability of agriculture. On the other hand, the study also increased the effectiveness of agriculture that improves the global demand of for feature products intelligence agriculture system can fulfill the scarcity issues of marine catches however outdoor agriculture has to control the quality of water to make sure the environment is suitable for the marine species to suffice because the internal factors might cause the change of water quality such as climate change therefore it is extremely important to develop a system of intelligent agriculture the study use an intelligent system to monitor the change of water quality additionally from the final group red to high, find out that the group rate can increase when the water quality reaches 
the optimal condition, which can boost the economy value significantly. Significantly. Using an automatic interpolation system AIS to debug variable state device, abstract inter interduration, the proposed scheme, performation calculation. The number of people who participate in outdoor activity are increasing. However, it has a question risk of doing outdoor activity such as weather risks and Losing the force while signaling. Therefore, people permission outdoor activity usually will remain safe device. Creating most user and and user and immunity are along stores. Mobile phone, mobile phone. Yet the potential rate of the four generation of broad broadband cellular network technology, four G four G network is now feel equal in some broader. Rural areas, which cast victim welding to send energy along, energy along. This study used an automatic at the intervention system AIS to develop a Wearable safety device because the transmission range of AIS is wider than other type of system, and it is easy to prepare in its enter fun function in AIS wearable device. When a victim press the Pressing button, the system will send the alarm with a global position system. As GPS single, the system will only detect the GPS location once when pushed in the pushing in. Pushing the button to reduce power corresponding, cons 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 which avoiding addition power corresponding will protect the detection the rich rich companies practice practice. Is implement and discover that the met is feasible in real world. Application application many country. 
promote outdoor activity and uh, accredited sport. Despite the activity has some right negative risks. For example, the factory threat of mountain climb is 60 like 60 person which across for the hedges hedges a mountain out, outdoor activity in taiwan there are more than 200 mountain across to the sector this from the nation fire engine Engine, the welding requires in incidents per year are one hundred eighty five cases on a virgin a mountain a mountain the requires case the high red is missing and the constant loss which is forty two percent on the other hand. There are the vice type of equity sport. It is quite cool to have revenge safety device. When there are no companies of having to wait waiting wait for recourse for recourse uh, waiting for recourse by floating a uh, safety the device cannot be too large to become a broadening. Besides, it is natural to develop a wearable device. We wear team port and the user family function for carrying around. Add adding is something take a long time to could conduce an outdoor activity which also need to concise the power supply su supply of the wearable device to grow. The power company and avoid the testing of losing power and failing to send a single. They study utility and automatic intervention, sy intervention system AIS as the fronting for defaulting a wearable safe device. The typical range of AIS is around 20 to 30 natural million where will be easy for requesting to such an location with time with time past post posting raping the design of the wearable safe device in the rich air to be user family which we want printing button which can reduce the information measurement sentiment for LD people. When pressing the press button, the system will detest, detest the location of the button and send the global posting system uh, post eh? position global position system uh, GPS sing single VIS with the AIS combination com combination the experimental ex experiment result of the study have provide provide that the metal is best body. The rich use 
an AI system to transmit single AS com combination are u usually for avoiding connection between mature ship. The range of AS is around 20 to 30 natural million, which is suitable for reaching the single send from outdoor safety device. As shown in Finger 1, the system model demands that stress that the system will send an AIS single request when a victim provides the press button and the resource team can location the position from the AIS sing signal. Finger 2 show the degree of the wearable, wearable device which country a strength for what paste button for use to understand and upgrade the device at at only one Finger 3 replacing the function degrab that the network ready for AIS country connection and the application later is for GPS and the Allen system model. Uh, system function uh, elementing button element along message broadcast as uh, web web browser device uh, system function the post uh, the rich usually AIS combination combination for the wearable device to in internet the GPS and detail the position when victim press the pressing button for layer for layer the system will Device the GPS position with the AIS single every time. Median considering the overall power component component send out a single every ten million can accurately reduce the energy workload for the wearable device and the uh, reduce reduce thing can reduce thing can re recap the single constation constant in the design the system will only decrease GPS position once when process the pressing button afterward, the system will terminate the decoder to avoid natural power. A combination material is it will also start the building and send the device to make a long shot. Usually, for the reduced team to find the weak ten rapidly. The hair word increment used in the suggestion system of the study is as little 
in Table One, which demonstrates the merging NIS postcare IC that has the transmission capability to twenty to thirty natural million and use a GPS discounter to check the position. Position the the actually act actor actually a a police a protect protectable better to simulate the experiment which present the detail in finger four and the finger five using and the inter Net of Chinese IoT de development development board for the software application combination so combination so the expanding maintenance the suggest method of this studying is. Facebook table the soft and the hard world the power power side system today many countries pay more attention to promote outdoor activity. Dividing there is a question left to risk for countries such activity. Therefore, we are we are we are providing safety safety devices become a quite use. However, some safety Device has small transmission range that make it fail to send effectively sing single nail to recruit the the school team. The study approved AI's combination combination that enjoy the transmission range. And employ a use user family operation method for other adults. A GPS the the care the care to and the care to in the system help the research team to convey the posting quickly. Move over a、uh, building, make a、uh, alarm, make alarm. Such reduce employee the risk team to find the big big sum. Thank you for your listen. VR and the AR technology on control communication. The land of this platform is building along the roller of heads, which was installed installed in the modern maritime scale roller capital Chengdu as the core of. Design and the program, the history of scale roller will be present. We pro pro program technology, which is one of the network mutant technology, in the form of web app, the real 
record and the spread of the human nature and science science still of Chenzhou will be sure in seven hundred twenty per price and the in must survive expansion of three D life Victor can be expanded. The aim of this study is to simulate and realize the all wrong release In the paper, the test of the VR programmation fuse fuse include imagine a causation, imagine regression, imagine small thing, imagine more more modification by the regression and metamorphical. Layer behind spell function the permacle. Per Link, po polemic camera coverage and projection model polemic trans transformation and the uh, crushing print print the print the imaging discretion of feature point and the uh, transform Frequency domain. Three medical which dispute three D lifelike sciences are describable in the research, including the linear fusion, arranging the future point base. Best imagery saving a Russian and the uh, gradually fighting out aggression agreement. What, what make this paper different from other is a planning for the VR and the AR on maritime scale roller. Cruiser, a escorting per per remember imagine the rule the rule of parameka imagine a question a question is to crew more than three thirty percent of the country with over library. Over, 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 yes, to overlap. So they, so they, they can in deity, in, 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 in the, in the, in the way, simulator feature points and the data imaging fission to gener, generally, generate three dimension Pyramid, 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 pyramid. Multi, multi, dense integration light and the sh shadow head and the triple company with the three hundred sixty degree camera are the key to to key to to. Fuel fly, fuel fuel fly. The experiment, the function of alternate, uh, alternate camera transformation, including translation, load load rotation, slanting in holding holding, and the retro discriminant. Feature point recognition met met on 
imagine regression task. Firstly, almost all vital of imagine processing matching feature point is the most famous weight the Pinnacle is to label the feature point of the real polynomial. Polynomial. Imagine we select important a table such as Eden, adding, adding or Linus, the main regression to match factor point are Harry and the SIFT aggressions. Aggression. Before the imagine this change being operate the factor point must be read and uh, calibrated first. Factor point matching a point approach around the feature point to expand in an easy and a more effective way. Moreover, we love simple size, recursion, and high fidelity, which imagine information and greatly confident Complicately can be revised to edge a sliding. However, the warning imagine discretion still for bear factor point matching a permission is good as a result to avoid imagine fusion factoring. Failing the RANSAC regression is need to check and uh, poorly the depths. Use small thing, small, small, small erosion on imagine visual text. Linear fusion er emotion this. Demand the user to add the pixels. Pixels, whales, whales of the imagine and check if there is any mis mistake in the safe imagine and lazy to convince which convince which side does the be still. Overlap. Apply if the overlap is on the right side. The imagine regression task of the leaf side is Osman to be feel the right style. Well. Opponent for measurement with when imagine are very distinct from other the linear fields. Augmentation can be applied source ADM match be the same. The augmentation allow imagine to change clarity and the accurating and the this sign the lab short showing up from the image. As change has grown into a more scientific face, border on the globe, one billion and one road has become a popular toy. However, no of the study has company this is will new the guiding table the the good technology this research is the first to company the most 
Gaussian web app version of virtual reality relies Persimmon, which with the 3D permission domain system of many scale rule correlation we which is at Chandra. The unicorn including in is couldn't is waiting to be explored and uh, the document by applying the 720 degree life like paramic paramic various is pricing advent the marking scale raw creator which may bring more inventor invent inventment to the one billion and the one road source quality to people's acknowledgement acknowledgement is the main focus of the research by Elkman. The paramount imaging reciting imaging we future based regression mix the imaging we still oration has made this reach to be the first one to present the parametrical imaging successful. The following step import the immersive service is pricing providing technology 3D parametrical Romain system on the parametrical parametrical imaging. One limited limit of this study is that is that the shared points of parametric technology still has room to be in provide less for as feature restretch is restrict it shorten pay attain attention to steep of obtaining paramount such as shorting discussion and the feature thank you thank you and thank for you listen Virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixes realities on the marketing on of film and television creation industry. Introduction. Virtual reality and augmented reality technology has been on the road to scientific research for many years since the end of the 20th century and all of the Scope of business reality application is real relatively narrow compared to the first two applications. We have seen the results. 
Realistic contents also have exploring progress in the field of film and television creation in recent years, such as virtual rea reality technology can be utilized to make film clips. In fact, this Technologies can be applied in film and television creation far more than that. I then illustrate some other aspects which this realistic contents can also be applied to in film and television creation in the future and the influence on the industry. Here are some examples about what feel this realistic contents has been applied. First, VR growth and open source is textual data growth which design the to facilitate detail manipulation of 3D objects in VR, enabling scientists to accomplish a range of specially Complicate, complicate molecule manipulation texts. Second, VR can be used by athletes to prepare for the Olympics. Sky, for example can wear VR helmets to simulate a run on the mountain while ski shaped balance boards provide some tactile feedback. What is more, it can also apply to the Court, where witnesses use it to restore the scene, education, and so on. Third, AR mask, Aster House. Design group, a well-known AR smart glasses manufacturer, has developed a product that uses AR technology. Max that will allow pilots to clearly see other things in a small field cockpit. Designed to help pilot land safely in an emergency, such as in smoke. 
There are other AR applications. For instance, AR also can enhance awareness on green cups consumption of electronic device be applied to sport and enter entertainment and advanced designers understanding of the fabrication equipment as a platform. Four. The fourth example is the application of MR in aviation. Microsoft partner with Western Machine Gun University to integrate MR technology such as Microsoft HoloLens in into aviation education. Currently, there are two ways to use this. One is a new simulation that can help pilots prepare for changes in the weather. Another application is an interactive MR application that allows students to explore the various components of an airplane. Research math. Screenwriters. When writing a script, Screenwriter often encounter the difficulty that they are not familiar with the background of the subject matter to be written and cannot fully realize the interaction between actor and the sex scenes because after all it is impossible to write a script in a scene directors anyone who wants to make a movie with the advent of realistic contents, they can create their own movie world where they can have unlimited imagination, make their own scenes, actor, and so on. This does provide a way for people who don't have a behind the scenes team to solve the problems. Film and television theme park. If you can show all of Thin clips taken there as the corresponding shooting venue. Then allow visitor to pick and choose their favorite clips. Wear glasses. 
so last fans can actually enter the shooting scenes to view. Such transmission has more effect on people's emotional transmission. This phone will greatly enhance their visiting experience and participation. And also let them pay attention to all the steps of the scene. Conclusion in the film and television industry, such as the division of time and drama of the show, the conduct of marketing means and can actually use realistic content technologies for the of gram to obtain the fattest. The least steps of the solution. In addition to the above proposed three points of application, the common benefit are bound to greatly improve work efficiency, complete industrial upgrading. Thanks for your listening. Multifunction electric scooter assistance system for seniors. Introduction with the rapid growth of the elderly population. To test long-term care needs, family care responsibilities are becoming increasingly heavy. In order to build a long-term care system, that means the needs of the elderly and people with physical and mental disabilities. The current change in the world's population structure along with the uh, advent of an engine society have brought many problems. Many elderly people use wheelchair while goes out along since the disease and Degradation. Degradation. Accidents are prone to happen for elderly inconvenient activity and their relatives unable to know that. It's easy 
cause regret. Many elder people use a scooter as the mo mobility equipment since they are inconvenient to work. However, the scooter does not have any warning device or driving record. More sensors and instance messages are required. In this paper, we use the IFTTT system in this land lab. When an accident occurs, IFTTT is used to send the location to the relative line application. The relative can know the location of the elderly through the line and remotely monitor the real-time behavior of the monitors person when the accident occurs. They can immediately realize the situation. They also know whether the elderly are riding a scooter by using the pressure sensor in the purpose system. The purpose system can effectively determine whether the scooter has an accident and send the GPS position and start the camera to record immediately. The proposed scheme Writing Situation Determination The proposed system flow chart shows in the figure 1 Detecting whether the elderly is Riding on the electric scooter is the first process in the proposed system. Next is retrieve the data of the pressure sensor around the vehicle. If the data indicates that is under pressure and the elderly is also sitting on the scooter. It means that the Aston impact is slight. If the elderly is not on the scooter and the pressure the value of the sensor is large, indicating that the impact force is large.
activate the monitor device in order to be able to monitor the impact of the scooter in the in real time the system immediately ac activates the level relevant photographic equipment after the sensor detect is as shown in figure 2 at the same time the system will also perform GPS precision detection when the system performs photo recording and GPS precision detection. The relevant information will be sent to the line of friends and relative. When the elderly is in good condition, he can press a button to send a message by himself to inform his relatives and friends. Experiment results. The experimental result of this paper are shown in Figure 3 to Figure 5. Figure 3 is the actual experimental development version implemented in this paper. The development version is equipped with sensors and Wi-Fi communication. Figure 4 is the real time image after collision and figure 5 is the eastern communication transmission the current position of elderly people can be known from the experimental results the map proposed in this paper is feasible and can also be practically applied to scooters.
conclusion. This system can be located at the location of the accident. Due to the relationship between technology and capability, currently only the collision location can be sent during the collision. An image processing abilities is poor so the image will be delayed in the future we hope that the map can be open when the electric vehicle moves It shows the location of the monitor's person and the route they worked. So that the monitor can be seen briefly. The proposed system in this paper can be applied to the elderly scooter. It can affect the purpose driving safety. And the experimental results can know that the math proposed in this article is visible. Design and implementation of smart pill box. Introduction With the advance of an engine society, many problems have been in trend. This article mainly develops a multifunctional smart pill box based on a smartphone. Since Taiwan has become an engine society. Many elders need to take chronic disease drugs due to the different time and number of drugs. The elders may be confusing of forgetting to take medicine. In the proposed small pill box system, it is mainly used to remind the elderly to take medicine the record the time of medication. The main functions include 1. To remind the elderly to use medicine. 2. To send the doctors electronic medicine list to the smart mobile device app for the elderly. 3. To supervise the medication for the elderly. In this paper, designing the alarm function of the Mobile app reminds the elderly to take medicine on time 
since they sometimes forget to take the medicine. In addition, the elderly people are not suitable for operating mobile device applications. This paper used NFC technology to transfer the medicine information to the elderly mobile device. The elderly people do not need to perform related app operations. It reminds the elderly people to take medicine. The small pill box will automatically open the medicine intake pool when the medicine is taken. When the medicine intake pool is not closed, it will automatically recruit that the elderly person does not take medicine. The app device proposed in this article will automatically calculate the time to reclaim the medicine. Reminding the elderly to remember to take the medicine. This article considers the power consumption of the smart pill box. The relevant calculations are mainly based on mobile device to avoid that the pill box is disabled since the power problems. The system architecture. There are three functions in the proposal system. One, medication reminder. After the seniors are treated, the doctor will send the medication time through the mobile device app and set the consultation time. When the medication time expires, the smart pill box will automatically open the, and the mobile device will remind the medication to be used. If it has not been turned off and the time of for taking the Medicine is exist. The alarm signal will be sent to the smartphone, and the smartphone will record that the pill has not been taken. Two. Medication time setting. There will be a doctor's order when the elderly goes to the doctor. It can be set in on the small pill box app. Consider that most elderly people are not familiar with the operation process of app. The real-time transmission of electronic medicine slips are designed in the proposed system. Therefore, the elderly just goes home and put the medicine into the medicine box according to the daily points without setting and operating the app as shown in figure 1. The development of four doctors. In this article, 
the function of the daughter side app is mainly to record patient's data, transmit the time of taking medicine and the number of days of taking medicine. In a proposed smart pill box system, it used to NFC to transmit the data and the database to record the retrieved data. It will display the personal information section of the elderly and display the name of the medicine used by the elderly and the number of days the medicine is used. In addition, the time for the elderly to use the medicine can also be set. The daughter side app will use NFC to send relevant information to the database of the elderly app and delete the information of the last medication to facilitate to the use of database space. In addition, the data side app will also set the reminder time of the elderly app. This function is to reduce the incompatibility of the elderly in operating IT. The mobile application development for elderly. The design app includes the following functions. It displays the current time and sets alarm to remind the elders to take medication. It reminds elders before they should go to the doctor. It records the situation of the pill box using Bluetooth and the time to take the medication by NFC. In the proposed system, most settings have been completed by the doctor's app through NFC. Therefore, the app interface for the elders does do not require additional settings, reducing the complexity of the elder operating the app. The implementation result. This article implements implements the smart pill box and the app program for doctors and seniors. App inventor to is used in the app development software and the uh, Arduino development is used in the hardware part. Table 1 shows the hardware and software device developed in this system. Figure 1 and figure 2 are the experimental results. Hardware 1. Arduino UNO R3. 
two, servo motor three, RTC clock module four, Bluetooth module component one, resistance two, micro switch software one. Development of the Arduino with C. 2. App Inventor. 3. Conclusion. With the convenience of a smartphone. The proposed smart pill box system can easily set the time for taking medication. When the time is up, the smartphone will automatically remind, and the pill box can only be open. The proposed smart pill box can improve the problem that the senior patients often forget the polite of taking medicine and taking the wrong medicine. The system can be further improved by increasing sensor modules to retrieve the psychological status of the elderly. In addition, Elderly people's families can also know about the elderly's physical condition and medication status through remote progress. We will also further consider power management and ability to make the system more complete in the future.